Siami, Siami family to everyone. Um, hope everyone is doing well. No, it's been quite some time since I've done the teaching um, on our Samba teaching. So today you have me. Uh, Manzambi will probably, uh, Manzambi Zola will probably be in and out, coming in. So um, this is something that I have been kind of working on here and there for quite some time, as you can see. It's the, uh, the tale of the aunt and the Christian cross. So we want to get down to see what's going on with these two here, because we know that they told us that the, the aunt was demonic, right? Most of us were in Christianity initially, and uh, we were told that it was demonic. Was anybody on here told otherwise that it wasn't? Yep, told so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, whenever, they, whenever they show occult symbolism, they always have the ankh with it. <laughs> yes, yeah. they yes, we were taught. Yeah, yeah. yes, we were yeah. taught the ankh was was demonic. Yeah, yeah. sure. Was. Okay, and you say it was occultic. You heard it was occultic. Well, yes, you, I heard people it talk about occultic symbols. They always, they always throw the ankh in there too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. we know that uh, these demonic beings always take something and corrupt it. So we will go through and we will see. We will look and see if, if, if it's such, you know, if, if the ark is demonic or not, or if it's occultic, uh, occultic, or to see, you know, if perhaps the cross is. So we're going to go through and we're going to see. Okay, as you can see here. I'm talking about life versus death here between the two, the ark and the cross. And it said it was around 3,000 BCE, but it was even farther back from there, from my, further back from, from that time, from what I have researched way back with our uh, ancestors. And the uh, Christian cross, as, as you can see, is, is now the common era. And uh, it's based on the feminine principles of nature and spirituality and peace. That is the arc, whereas the cross is based on the masculine principles of theocracy, politics, and war. And we're going to get on into that. And while I got this up, I'm just going to go ahead and show you all. You see at the top here, you have like an oval shape. That is the feminine uh, symbolism. That is a feminine principle. And then you have here at the bottom, which actually is a phallic, which I know they say it was demonic, but it is representative of the masculine uh, energy. And when the two come together, it they create. The masculine and the feminine create. So when a male and a female come together, they create. And so Tata and Zombie told us to create, right? And so the two, those two energies are needed to create. So all this here stuff that they're preaching and teaching about the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, and all the others is demonic and it is not of the most high. It, it, it contradicts, you know, even nature itself because you need the two to create. And as you can see here, the cross, they took um, the oval symbol out. That is why it, it is said that it is uh, masculine. And so you always, we live in a world of uh, duality. And so you always have to have the opposite to have balance, hot, cold, up, down, left, right, et cetera, et cetera. And when one is missing, then there's chaos and there's this order. So as you can see, the uh, feminine energy is not represented in the, uh, the Christian cross here. Only the male, as you can see, male, male, and here you see the female, male. So there's order right there with the, the aunt, which creates life. And here you just see the masculine energy. And that is what we're dealing with today and have been dealing with for quite some time, for many centuries. And that is why we have the chaos that you see in the world. You see all these wars and stuff that's going on and that has been going on, all these killings that have been going on because of the people that took away the feminine energy and just put the masculine energy on top and bottom. And you see the spirit is running rampant, you know, in the world uh, today. So the Ankh is the ancient hieroglyphic word for life. So it's, it's just on the... When you, is it just symbolizes life, you know, in uh, Kamada, some people say comedic, and it is also translated as breath of life and eternal life. It is known also as the key of life. Why is it a, the key of life? As I stated, you have the two 
uh, energies, the masculine and the feminine or the feminine, which is on top and the masculine coming together. So that is the key to life because they create life. And without the two, you cannot have life. So we have a lot of death and destruction that is going on now because the feminine has been taken out of the equation. And this is actually the original cross. And we'll see that as we get on further into the, uh, the slides here. And it's symbolic representation of both the physical and eternal life. And we will see that also as we get into that. I'm just showing you these things here to let you know these are some of the things that we're going to pull out so that we can see because we need to know the truth. Because when, when we don't have truth, we're in darkness. That's what darkness symbolized in, in the uh what they have in the New Testament. So when you are in the light, that means that you are enlightened or you have the truth, you know the truth and you're walking in the truth. But when you're walking in, in darkness, you don't have the truth. And we don't want to walk, walk in darkness. We want to walk in the light. So we have to expose the lies in order for us to know the truth and walk in the truth and be enlightened and walk in the light and be of the light. So the Romans referred to as referred to the Ark as the Coops and Sada. That was the Latin terminology that they use to describe. You know, they always use their words to describe ours, and uh, it, it is basically means the cross with the handle, and that's what they called it. So here again, let me move this here. The Ark is life, and what is life? the quality that distinguishes a vital and functional being from a dead body. Spiritual existence, transcending physical death. And we, we're talking about life. And I'm kind of, I'm gonna get off a little bit from the onk because I want to show you all something, but it ties in with the onk because the onk is symbolic for life. And I want to show you all something here. So it says it's the spiritual existing, existence transcending physical death. So what do we mean by transcending physical death? Life in the afterworld, or life beyond this realm. That's what life is. It means that as well. So transcending is, is uh, defined as to rise above or go beyond the limits of, the limits of what? This realm. To triumph over the negative or restrictive aspects of, or to overcome. To be prior to. Beyond and above. The universe or, or material existence. Now, you all know that they are doing a lot of research in space and they have discovered something that they uh, have termed dark matter and uh, dark energy. Have you all heard of that? Mm -hmm. Yes. So they said they don't know what it is. They know it's there. They can't see it. It's expanding the universe and holding up the stars and so forth and so on, but they don't know what it is. And that's all I'm going to say on that. Dark matter, dark energy. That's the same as Black Lives That's where Black Lives Matter really come from. Come from what? what dark matter. Well, they took it and corrupted it then. Because that's what they're really talking about. That's what, more than melanin. You that's melanin. what they're talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's, what they, that's what it really represents. Yeah. So That movement. They're talking about dark matter. <laughs> yeah. It, it ain't that's really about us. We're the dark matter. You know, mm -hmm. we're matter. That is where yeah. the Latin terminology mother matter comes from. Right. Us, dark. <laughs> And so melanin, melanin come from the word, the Greek word melo, which means dark. We're dark. We have melanin. And so that space that they can't, they don't know what it is, but they know it's there. It's just right. a dark space. And when you begin to really research it and see and get into the, the uh, scientific terminology that they use because they hide things, you will see it's nothing more but a form of melanin. Talk about being created in his image and in his likeness. <laughs> y'all y'all feel me melanin is is in everything everything, everything. <laughs> at the time of creation when the uh the ovum and the, and the when the egg and the sperm come together there you have melanin there 
It's in your spine. It's in your eye. It's everywhere. Your pineal gland creates it. It's, it's, and it's more abundant in us. More abundant in us. So it's important to know who we are. It's our makeup. It's our makeup. Right. Mm -hmm. So it is so important and so vital these people want to go out in space. I'm not going to get into that and get into another tangent that they are, they have sent melanin out in space. Are you all aware of that? They have a project where they sent melanin out in space to see how it will react to the uh, radioactive waves and radiocarbon and things out in the atmosphere because they want to use melanin to create gear for them to go out in space. <laughs> we are right. some powerful people and we just really don't know who we are they know more about us than we do because you know, we have lost so much from them um taking so much so much from us making mm -hmm. us forget who we we are so forth and so on but they forgot about dna dna is a library it's memory from thousands and thousands and thousands of years store it stores way more than a computer could ever store so they forgot about that that is why you all are awakening <laughs> what's in your dna is calling you hmm. <laughs> all yeah. right the noun for life is live which is defined from an etymological perspective as literally to co continue remain term of duration or existence, sense of vitality, energy in action. Now, science is my thing. I love science and I love English. Energy cannot be destroyed. So it says life or to live is energy, right? Mm -hmm. And it can't be destroyed. <laughs> so if we are energy, we can't be destroyed we're not destroyed we yet live on yes yes y'all see that yes yeah you can't destroy energy you can manipulate it mm -hmm. but you can't destroy it apart from our our uh, earth suit mm -hmm. that's the part that's destroyed but right. not the, not the energy that right houses and it's not even destroyed it goes back from whence it came to the earth to death Mm. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that's another teacher. Maybe I, I give y'all one day what that, what all that is. Animating principle. So life and live is also referred to as the animating principle. You see here, energy in action, vivifying or animating principle. So what is animating principle? The non-physical part of a person regarded as their true self. So this, what you see here is not my true self. This is just a shell. This is just a house that, that houses who I really am, the essence of who I am, the essence of who you are, capable of surviving physical death or separation. So that which is inside of you, mm -hmm. inside of your temple, that's the animating principle that survived physical death, okay? Okay. Yes. <laughs> so I want you all to, to keep bear this in mind because I'm going somewhere with this to show you something so that we can go on to the arc. It is also synonymous, talking about life, live, animating principle, is also synonymous with the consciousness, <laughs> the spirit man, the breath of life, numa, vital force or force, and the spiritual being. That is where the Greek get all these terminologies from in, in healthcare uh, that deals with your lung, pneuma, pneumonia, pneumonitis, cause of your lung, the air, breath, your essence. So that part lives on. That part is energy. It, mm -hmm. does, it cannot be destroyed, people. That vital force, that spirit, <laughs> that is within this temple. The spirit man lives on after transcending to the spiritual world. Okay, bear that in mind. The yeah. spirit lives on. Mm -hmm. 
but this body goes back mm -hmm. to the earth. Now I want to go to some past. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abana, the God of Yesica. And the God of Yakuba. Can y'all hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. And, and Masa hid his face for he was afraid to look upon the most high. And then in Matthew 22, 21. So remember, he said, he's the God of your fathers. So in Matthew 22, 31 and 32, it says, but as touching the resurrection of the dead, had ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, now he's going back to Exodus, because remember, during this time, there was no such thing as the New Testament when Christ and the disciples was around. So he's referencing what we refer to as the Old, Old Testament. Mm -hmm. He said, that which is spoken unto you by who? By the Most High, saying, I am hmm, the God of Abana, the God of Yasek and the God of Yakuba. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living, living, the living. What did I just say to you all? Spirit is energy. Energy cannot be what? Um, Destroy. The spirit man lives on. So when people say, you know, in church, they right, mm -hmm. and they're demonic. According to what we have seen thus far, uh, solidified in these passages here that our ancestors are not dead because our creator is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Right. I showed you about transcending and the animating principle, how the spirit man transcend into the other dimension. It does, it does not end. So we don't die. So we're not dead. When we we just transition into another world. Y'all following me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. The Congo Cosmogram. Exactly. <laughs> the spirit man li lives on after transcending to the spiritual world. Okay. So this here is from uh Jeff Banner. I know you all know Jeff Banner. He's a ish guy, but I want to use their stuff to <laughs> show you all and to discredit them. So resurrection, because here we talked about, he says, by as touching the resurrection that they taught erroneously in Christianity. How in the world did they get in there? But anyway, <laughs> my computer is sensitive. This is my computer, not man zombie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> The devil is a liar. I know that. That's right. I'm trying to figure out how in the world this is happening. I, I'm, not even, I'm not even touching anything. Um, you, you know what that is? It's on my uh, phone. Something popped up. And I didn't know. I was trying to click it off. And if I move my hand over it, it writes on the screen. I don't know how that happened. What? I don't know where that happened with, and this is my computer. I don't have no whiteboard up. I don't have it as a whiteboard. So I know it can, you can do that when it's a whiteboard, but okay. But why would it do it with mine, with me? I don't know. I'm saying it shouldn't happen because I don't have the whiteboard on. But anyway, we're not going to allow this to distract us. We're going to move on. You see, technology is spiritual. <laughs> the devil is a lie. The truth, and I the truth I shall come forth and the lie shall be uh -huh. exposed. Kim. So here you all, I said, is this going to be on all my slides? That's what I said. I don't know how wow. to take this off. Uh, come out and come back. That's what I was going to do. I was going to get out of it. I was getting ready to do that. Okay, I'll go out too. Okay. I'm gonna see if that, I don't think it's gonna stop hers. Hmm. We had to undo it. That's interesting how they got on the Zoom screen. Yeah. Very interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Uh huh. 
Imelt I've never seen that. You may have to close the presentation and not save if it has to see what happens. You should screenshot it and and re and, and research that, that letter. That's interesting. The letter that is. Research that. Okay, I'm gonna stop scan, uh, sharing the screen real quick, you all. So I'm gonna get up. A, I'm gonna I'm gonna reopen my PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Okay. It's gone. All right. All right, family, you with me? Mm, yes. Yeah. See the screen? Yes. Okay. That was interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Okay, here we are. So um, as I was stating here, it says by such a resurrection, and I was talking about how they erroneously teach about resurrection in the church. Because they think that it's going to happen at one particular time with everybody. And that's not so. That's not true. So when we transition, we're actually resurrected. Right. From, mm -hmm. the, from this realm to that realm. <laughs> that's actually when you're living. So, Even with Josiah, it wasn't his physical body. <laughs> that's not what it's talking about. No, no, it's not. Yeah. So they, somebody we was talking to made a, a, a good point and said that how these people took our scrolls, we know, when they went into uh, Kamata Kemet, ancient Egypt, looking at our scrolls, and they were trying to decipher. So some one, they may not have really understood what they were reading and they was just writing, which we know that is how they came up with all these Greek philosophers, thinkers. Mm -hmm. That's what philosophical thinkers were. They thought, this is what I think. Mm -hmm. They came up with certain things and uh, that's what they came up with the Trinity and that they really actually weren't thinking on that. They just butchered that. Some things they altered because they didn't want the world to know the truth. Mm -hmm. They added they took away. Mm -hmm. Some things were deliberate, in other words, and some things were not. Mm -hmm. So you, I say to people now, you have to be very, very careful with this book called the Bible, because mm -hmm. if you don't understand it, you can speak curses over yourself. You know? mm -hmm. uh, we talked about that last week. If you're not careful with it, you will speak a curse over yourself. Mm -hmm. And so being in, in Christianity, that happens a lot. You know, yeah. because they're teaching from those people's perspective and not ours. This this book is ours. It's about us. Mm -hmm. It's very clear and evident when you go in the book of Genesis. And I'm not going to get off on that. I want us to stay on topic here. But to show you, it's right in Africa. Yep. When it talks about the four rivers and how yep. one encompasses Ethiopia. And Ethiopia in the Bible is not modern day Ethiopia, which is the what? kingdom of mm -hmm. Ash, uh, uh Askama, Axum. Right. Ethiopia is the area in Central Africa where majority Correct. of us came from. Correct. Correct. So it's a river that encompasses in that area. So that's Africa. So how can, yeah. I'm, I'm going to say this and I'm going to say it with boldness. How dare they say that our brother's being anti Semitic or anti Semitic <laughs> when it's him himself, his fathers, his ancestors? This mm -hmm. is from the heart of Africa. Right. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. just told you all that with the very thing that they refer to as the Bible, that river that passes, it says beyond the river of Kush. Yeah, that's Congo. That's Congo. That's Congo. Congo. Yes. That's Congo. Congo. <laughs> us came from. That is yeah. us. Yes. And now because this information is coming forth, because yes. we have Kyrie mm -hmm. Irving now that's coming mm -hmm. out. And rest assured, you all, they're living in an era where lies are being exposed. Yes, it has to come out. They, they can't stop it. It's going to come out. It can't. It has to. They can't do this. Yep. Hallelujah. So they yes. can sanction everybody all they want mm -hmm. to. This is not going to stop because of the era that we're living in. Yeah. yeah. I can't stop it. Nobody can stop it. Nobody can stop it. Right. No. It's popping up like popcorn. Uh -huh. yep. <laughs> None they can do. So they, they yes. were they trying to play games and get out in front of it. And that's why they're using Kanye. That's right. what I was saying in the chat. Right. Kanye has the, the 
everybody looks at him as mentally ill, most people. We, so by him saying these things, him being him being over here, him being over there, now people thinking they, they're gonna look at this awakening as illegit, right? Illegitimate, thinking, oh, now you're talking that Kanye mess, because they they thinking we we already know this stuff. Somebody That's brand true. new to they first hear from Kanye, they're gonna think we crazy when we come to say. That's saying. true. That's true. And this is this is what this is a game that they playing. Right. They because they can't stop the awakening, so they're gonna try to it'll, it'll make it illegitimate mm -hmm. when we say it. But again, they can't stop it. Right, and they can't say that everybody's crazy. Right, right. <laughs> one pop up, then another one pop up, and then another one pop up, and are we all crazy? Yep. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So we're in the age of Aquarius, you all. Where mm, yeah. that, they, there's increased knowledge, there's exposure, and a host of things. What that means. So that's why I said they can't stop it. They know this is the age of Aquarius, where uh, the truth is coming forth. Uh, increased knowledge and awareness so this this just is time they they can't stop it and uh in psychology talking about different uh uh psychiatric diagnosis such as schizophrenia bipolar they said that he's bipolar all that mm -hmm. stuff has nothing to do with but just a spiritual realm and people mm -hmm. just don't know how to to deal with it and, right. and a lot of it has to do also with with demons too, when people have all these multiple personalities, right? A lot of these are just demonic entities that are inhabiting an individual, causing right. them to, to do things or say things. I see it all the time. They call it. <laughs> I was telling a friend of mine, we've got off, but I want you all to know this. Uh, <laughs> in 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 psych psychiatry or psychology, they have a thing called hyper religiosity. It's very prevalent when you see people coming in with a, di a psychiatric diagnosis, hyper-religiosity. And what they mean by that is always God, God, or something about religious, or I saw the devil. hyper It's always something about religious. So psychiatry, psych has to do with the mind, the yes. essence of who you are. So yes. it, it is very spiritual. It's very spiritual. Yes. So I'll tell you all a story offline. I can't tell you right now while we're on recording, but I'll tell you a story once we get off. <laughs> so they, they can call it psychotic. It's not psychotic. It's just spiritual, a spiritual awakening. That's yeah. what it is. So we, we, we are finding out who we are. We're gods and goddesses, kings and queens. From royalty, we descend. Mm. That is who we are. Yep. You told us we was nothing and nobody. Yep. They was all everything that they said that we were, it was actually them. They said we were barbaric. Who went around the globe killing off everybody, stealing people, kills, raping, robbing, stealing, and pillaging right now? Exactly. Yeah. That's barbarism. Exactly. Yeah. They are of what, their father. What have we done as melanated people? Have we went around the globe stealing, raping, robbing, and pillaging people? Not absolutely no. not. <laughs> no. That is not us. So they have projected their image on us okay. and tried to assume our identity. That's yeah. what has happened. And it's coming to roost with them. It's, it's they being exposed for who they really are. The barbarics that they really are. All right. So resurrection, let's get back on, on uh, topic here. The word resurrection does not appear in, in, in the English translation of the Old Testament, but it does in the New Testament. So resurrection is not even in the Old. It came about in the New Testament. And remember I told you the New Testament wasn't even around during the time supposedly of Christ and his disciples. So it wasn't even around then. So that's the New right. Testament it says anesthesis. Uh, anesthesis. Strong's 386. And it is derived from the word anastemi, which means to stand up or to rise up. So that's what resurrection means, to rise up. Okay? In the Peshitta, a 5th century Aramaic New Testament, the word used for resurrection in the verse above is the word, it says, kayamta. This Aramaic word translate into Hebrew. See, they try to hide stuff. Aramaic is just a corrupted form of our language, Kikongo. That's all it is, you all. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. all. Just like the modern day. That's why they have to say modern. You notice they said modern Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Why are you saying modern Hebrew? Because it's not the ancient, which is our language, the Bantu languages, and we know mm -hmm. this. 
Mm -hmm. And we can easily prove that and dispel it. It's been done already. So we don't even have to go that route. So that, that lie mm -hmm. that they're saying, I read an article this morning talking about how Kyrie Irving is promoting you, you know, this book of uh, Ron Dalton. Mm -hmm. right? And uh, they're saying that this is not true, that it's false. The information that is presented in the book, you mm -hmm. know, but we know, we know the truth. And so they try to tell the world that we're lying. See, yeah, that's why I said they're trying to beat us to the punch. Yeah, but they're mm -hmm. the only one that has <laughs> liars. You know, in the Bible, it says the thief. A thief <laughs> is the one that steals. Yes. Take something that doesn't belong to you. The thief comes but to steal. Yeah. Who has stolen? They have. Riches and resources in the land of Congo, mm -hmm. which is beyond the river of Kush. Who has stolen? The thief comes but to steal, kill, who has killed? Mm -hmm. Millions mm -hmm. on millions of Bantu people in Africa, yeah. in the diaspora. When they took our ancestors out off, off of uh, the land of Africa and brought our ancestors here, they killed mm -hmm. millions and millions of us. Millions. The thief comes yeah. but to steal, kill. Now let's get to destroy. Who's going around the globe destroying everything? creating stuff to to manipulate the the uh, the uh, atmospheric energy to create uh tornadoes and so forth and so on to destroy they are who's doing that y'all that's gonna tell you who the thief is yep mm -hmm. just Without answer the question who's doing that stealing killing and then uh and destroying them. everything that our ancestors did it was in line with nature yes Yes. Because we know that we're one with nature. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So our life that our ancestors lived was the life that we're supposed to be living to preserve, to protect. Not with the life that we have today that is destroying animals. They said the ozone layer, but destroying so much. For the simple fact of one thing, wealth. Yep. Mammon. Mm. Mammon, yep. You know, side note, I remember Queen Nguyen was saying how, and some, I think somebody else said this too, when they came and they saw the riches and the abundance that our land had, because they don't have this stuff, you all. Why do you, why you think they, they came in the, the Berlin conference and split up our land? Yep. It is to, to control the resources. I show I did a teaching back here and showed you all how UNESCO themselves, they're the, the, the very ones that did it, they tell on themselves that the World War One and Two was for the control of Africa. Rest assured, the World War Three that we are embarking on right now. <laughs> It's about the same thing you ask the control of our land and our resources. Mm -hmm. yeah. But our family on the continent is finally waking up and saying no! And they're mm -hmm. taking these devils out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Why? Because of the time that we're living in now. Yeah. Yes. It can't be stopped. I don't care what, what they try to do. You can sit up there and say, we're crazy. We're lying. We're whatever you want to say. Your words will not stop it. Your words are useless. Your words are not power. It's rendered, it's rendered useless. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not even your weapons. <laughs> nope. 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 So in modern Hebrew, the word for resurrection is Takuma, the same word from the Peshitta, and it's derived from the root word Q-W-M. We have root words. That's us. Bantu. Yeah. yeah. Strong's meaning to stand up again or to rise up. And it's found once in the Hebrew Bible. So let's look at this word where it says Takuma. To rise up. We're talking about resurrection. We're talking about living after what they refer to as death, how our spirits live on, how our forefathers are not dead, that transition into the afterlife. I'm tying this all in. Y'all just bear with me. Mm -hmm. So it says ability of power to stand, right? And it's from H, which is Hebrew, 
6965. So let's go and see what that is. They're saying that's the root, the etymology of it. Kun. Arise. Y'all remember the song we sung? Kumbaya. Mm -hmm. Someday, yeah. I don't want to say Kumbaya. That's mm -hmm. it. Kun. And they told us it meant come by here. Mm -hmm. It does not mean come by here. It means rise and zombie, rise. As you can see here, kum means to raise or to arise. So that song was saying, rise up among us. Yes. It means to establish, to continue. Now, remember that. Remember all this, what I'm telling you all, so we can tie this all in here, okay? Samuel said to Saul, why have you disturbed me? I didn't put the right one up here, you all, passage. Why did you make me come back? <laughs> now this is, y'all remember Saul when he went to the quote unquote witch of Endor, right? Right. Yeah. He yeah. wanted to summon Samuel, right? Yes. So mm -hmm. if he was dead, then how could uh, Samuel come forth? And speak and say this to him. Hmm? <laughs> but, but they're dead. But they're dead, they he, said. They, right. don't, they said they don't know what's going on. They said your ancestors come back to you in a dream or whatever. It's a demon, right? But here we see, so the Christ, Christians can see how you contradict yourself by your very own Bible. Because Samuel, the prophet Samuel, the Nabi Samuel came and said, why are you disturbing me? Why did you make me come back? Come back from where? From that realm to this realm. <laughs> and Saul <laughs> answered him and said, I'm in trouble. You know, they coming at me, war is going on. And the Most High has abandoned me because he supposedly didn't do what he's supposed to have done multiple times. Mm -hmm. He said, he won't answer me. No, the prophets, I'm not having dreams no more. I don't know what to do. So I come to you. <laughs> he came to his ancestor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was his ancestor, y'all. He yep. said, so I have called you for you to tell me what I must do. What must I do? I have trouble around me. First Samuel 28, 15. They're not dead when they transition on. The spirit doesn't die. And I just want to show you all this here. This is in King. I know. Can you uh, mute, please? Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> First King. This is all in King. I'm not going to say them. You see it. It says, so David slept with his father. So Solomon slept with his fathers. And uh, Jeroboam slept with his fathers. And Rehoboam slept with his father. And it goes on and on and on. There's many more uh, scriptures, you all, that talks about them sleeping with their fathers, okay? So they went to the realm of where their fathers were. Fathers were. See that? Fathers. They went to where their fathers were. So your fathers, your forefathers, your ancestors, are not dead, but yet alive. Y'all following me? They're not dead. See, they play on words. Let me show you something here. It says, they slept with their fathers, right? Okay. I'm going to take you here, show you something. This is a, a real good lesson that you're bringing forth. You know, I've, I've been listening. I've really been enjoying everything, you know, um, but you're right. You know, they have done so much and they tried to put it on us and blame us for it when they are the ones who do the stealing, the killing, and the destroying, and there's doing it to this very day. Mm -hmm. So this, this is beautiful. 
beautiful mama Brenda. Rondo. Okay, I just want to show you all this. I'm going to share the screen here and uh, show you where I'm at here. <clears throat> Okay, so I went to the Blue Letter Bible, you all. We talked about fathers, right? So, Lee, father, I just pulled up something, a scripture that has father in it. And you see it's Ab. That's where you get Baba, Tata. That's where all that come from. That's what we say. They said Abba is Baba. They always change things up. So let's look at it. We looked at it before, but we're going to look at it again and see, because I told you they play, they play on words and they play with our minds to see what fathers mean father of an individual individual and means ancestor so when you see our fathers it's saying our ancestors so he slept with his ancestors forefathers it's the same word so no matter how you say it father forefathers ancestor producer generator all the same ruler chief all the same you see how they play on words and they have manipulated things. Whew. Man. Damn, That's the spell casting upon, among the people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh oh, I didn't want to go back there. Okay. All right. So I just wanted to show you all that that when he slept with when he said they slept with his father, meaning that they went to the, the realm of where their ancestors were. Okay. So this here stuff that they teach in Christianity, saying in heaven, oh, everybody's gonna be there together, according to what they they even use themselves, it contradicts it. They they use the Bible, right? So I'm gonna use the Bible to discredit what they're saying. Oh, oh, everybody's no, it's where your forefathers said, your ancestors, the land of your forefathers, the place where they are. That's where we're going. So I'm not going with any other ethnicity but my own, according to the Bible. Okay? Our ancestors, our forefathers. So your fathers, forefathers, ancestors are not dead, but yet live. Remember what we said live means. I'm going to go back over here and show you all. I went back too far. Right here. The noun for life is live. Literally to continue. To remain. Term of duration or existence. Sense of vitality. Energy in action. Doing something. The animating principle. Which is capable. It means it's capable of surviving physical death or separation and it is the same as the spirit the breath of life vital force so i just wanted to go back over that with you all so literally to continue remain term of duration all what i just said there is synonymous with all those things force remember i did that teaching uh on uh nomos and i told you about force key chi all those things Okay, so key, I'm gonna go back over that real quickly. For those that were that have not seen that uh, teaching, were not they were not in that teaching or they haven't seen that video that's on YouTube, you can go back and look at that. Key is the life force and energy of the universe, energy of the universe that flows throughout everything. That is why we use K, they use C, we use K because it has more power. Words have power. Our language is more powerful than their language. Yes, I said that, and that is correct. It is. It's frequency, words of frequency. So certain letters and words have higher frequency than others, you all. Mm -hmm. So key, like in Kikongo, mm -hmm. is the life force and energy of the universe. Like Congo, they changed it from K to C. Why? Because they know. They know the frequency of the letter K and the power that it emanates is on a higher level than the C that they use. 
Yes. Just like with Christ, it's not C, it's K R S in Kemet. It flows through everything. Key, K I C H I. The 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 uh, the Asians they got it from us. Now they'll try to say, "Oh, we got it from them," but who was here first? Who does even their scientists say was here first among any group of people? It's us. So no, they got it from us about the life force, the energy. And in church, they call it the Holy Spirit. Also known as the Ashe, the Ka, the breath of life. All one and the same, you all. How does this tie into the Ankh? I told you all it means life and it also means breath of life. I told you all from the beginning here. Do y'all remember that? So I told y'all to remember so we can tie this in. Translated as breath of life and eternal life. The Ankh, did I? Yeah, I'm finished with that. Any hands up? Somebody said, what letter is that? What letter you were talking about? I was talking about the K. Okay. All I right. Think, huh? No, I think what you saw there might have been, if it's from um, Royal Daughter, she's talking about this stroke that you saw on your PowerPoint earlier. Oh, okay. Okay. The Ankh is, is uh, symbolism of the Ta Cross. Y'all heard of the Ta Cross? Anybody? No, I haven't. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to get in that a little bit. The Ta Cross. The Ta is Greek, you all. That's that's a Greek. Uh, the bull and cow symbolism is widely used in many ancient cultures. And on the side note there, I told you all, they got everything from us. Mm -hmm. You will see them saying, I've, I've been paying attention to them. You know, in ancient Greek and Rome, they did this, but they don't never go back as far as where they got it from because they, it's going to tell on themselves. Mm -hmm. Greek conquered the area where our ancestors lived. Then after the Grecians, the Romans came in and conquered the Greeks where our ancestors live in North Africa. You ask anybody that know a little bit of their history or know their history, practically all of them over there on the continent will tell you, our ancestors said they came from the North. Who's on here that's from, from Africa? Let me see, let me pull up. I am. Khadijah, mm -hmm. where do they say your ancestors came from? From the North. <laughs> From the north, a uh, silverback, you all. Yes, mama, that is true. From the north. So they conquered the northern part of our land. That's why we ran deeper into uh, right. where, where they are now. A train. The most I said, I'm going to give you another land, and it's going to be overflowing. It's going to be flowing with milk and honey, which is symbolic of all those riches that they steal. And see, <laughs> so as they were coming in, killing us, we was running away from these barbarians. Remember, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. So as they were coming in from their area to steal, they were killing. And we, our ancestors was running away from these folks. Because we didn't do stuff like that. I mean, they was killing rapid people. Even in their own uh, documents. Uh, what's that man's name? Um, he has a book. He said that they was they that, that they the Romans slaughtered millions, quote unquote, ish. They said Jews, but we know who it really was because it was in North Africa. Because he said, and they ran deeper into Africa. Who's in deep? Deep is like the heart. Who's in the heart of Africa to this day? Bantu. 
And you're trying to say that these people are crazy, that they're not telling the truth, that they're lying? Where are your people at? If they ran deeper into Africa, where are your people at in deep? At? See, they tried to go there. They tried to go to Uganda. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Because they were trying fit, fit to. Huh? It didn't fit their narrative. They was they was trying to go into deeper Africa to, to uh sub, to support their lie. Right. But it didn't work. So they created this land over here that they went to and they changed it and called it Israel. Israel is not a place. It's a people. It's a person. You see how they lie? So and they're they, the liars. And they stole from where they are. Now, <laughs> they stole and brought that. <laughs> no, I was told they originally, before they went up into the so-called Middle East, that they originally tried to... Uh, declare Israel in Africa. Like they try to take one of the countries in Africa. Yeah, that's what we was just saying. They yeah, Madagascar is where they wanted Madagascar, to Madagascar, right. Huh? Yeah, what you just said, Madagascar. They went to Kenya also. And Uganda. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now. All in the 1900s, by the way. Y'all said they tried to go to Kenya, Madagascar. Mm. Well, I screwed that out right, but, but Kenya, Uganda, it was one more, wasn't it? They tried to go. Where are those places at? That was yeah. part of the Kingdom of Congo. You are where our people from. Right. Oh, Bantu Land. Yes. Yes. Wow. Wow. And then, and then, I, and then I, I heard that they tried to take soil from Congo to take it back to grow stuff in that desert that they're in now, up in mm -hmm. Northeast Africa. Yeah, they are doing that. That's because they ain't growing anything. It's a desert. They have to eat uh, siphon water to go there. It's dry. It's a desert. Right. But yeah, you want you want you don't told the whole world that it's the land flowing with milk and honey, and it's a dry <laughs> desert. You ain't no, producing no, nothing. It doesn't even have one. Well, they they are dead people, so they living in a dead land. So in a dead yeah. land. <laughs> they they couldn't come into ours because spiritually it was not going to happen. It's protected. No. It's yeah, yep. you're not gonna let them do it. They had to go to an empty, room, empty dry land, like you said. And the sad thing is that we still believe that that's the holy land and want to go. Yep. Yeah, a lot of us. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of them. But it does that's not fit the, the true narrative of, of our place. It says land flowing with milk and honey. That is an idiom for riches and resources. Correct. So where are the riches and resources? Y'all know how they make their money. First of all, it's too small to even hold it. Right. Yeah, it's too, too small. small. The size of New Jersey. Right. And do, <laughs> doesn't the Bible say that it's a vast land? Vast land was a lot of us. Yeah. And that land up there is surely not coughing up gold and diamonds like down in sub-Saharan Africa. But they have no, to not, not, even, not even there. close. Not even close. Yeah, they, they're getting it from the Congo to bring there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They don't even have our totems there, like the lion and different things. And when you look it up, they'll say that they are extinct. But they're still in the lions are in it's still there in sub-Saharan Africa. Because yes, it right. talks about that in the Jaguars and the uh the uh the yeah, they got some all over Namibia got a bunch of them. Yeah. yeah. The elephants. So they, have to, they have to constantly lie to cover up their lie, but then they saying we telling a lie. So we're gonna dispel y'all lies by just showing who we are. That's what we're going to do. We ain't going to focus on. But anyway, it says the bull and the cow symbolism is widely used in many ancient cultures. Okay? We know that the, 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 the bull represent power. The horns represent power, you all. And I know they have taken a lot of our symbolism and corrupted it. And they teach in Christianity that these things are demonic now because they corrupted it. We know that uh, these the, the demons don't do nothing, but they don't create nothing. They take stuff from other people, mm -hmm. other ethnicities, and use it. And most of the time, they just corrupt it. And so over the years, they become corrupted. People just know about corruption, but it wasn't what it was so in the beginning. So the bull and the cow, you see this a lot in ancient Kemet. And it don't, says, why? Hmm? Don't they try to use the bull to represent their stock market? 
bullish. Oh yeah, yeah. bull yeah. bull market. Bull markets and yep. you know why they call it that? Of the bull. Yeah. You know why they call it the bull market or bullish? Mm -mm. Because they use cattle in our land in Africa as a source of uh, income. That's your wealth. <laughs> <laughs> That's where they get it from. And stock. <laughs> stock. That's why it's called stock market, because they're stock. Livestock. Live stock. Live stock. Live stock. <laughs> Everything that they got, hear me out, family. Mm -hmm. It's stolen. Yeah. It's stolen. Yeah. From us. <laughs> the stock market ain't nothing but the matrix, man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the <laughs> stock market. The stock market was created, I researched this a couple of years back. I think it was three Europeans. It was nothing but a a, a Ponzi scheme is how it started out. It's a Ponzi yeah. scheme. Yeah, it's what exactly what it is. The Wolf of Wall Street, that movie, they tell you in that movie. That's why they made that movie. You ever seen The Wolf of Wall Street? I haven't. I, I need to watch it. I have not uh -huh. seen it. Yeah. So and it's a little wild though. It's a little wild. Okay. Yeah. The mm -hmm. cow. Bull and horn symbolism is related to the sun and consciousness symbolism of resurrection and birth. Now, understand we don't worship the sun. You know, these are elements that was given to us that we have dominion over. And uh, the the uh, Bible says that it was given to us as, you know, these things to the sun rule in the day, the moon by night, and all the stars and all these things, they tell us things. Hmm. In the Bible, isn't it say there's, uh, there's nothing new under the sun? Hmm. Nothing. So the sun is recording stuff. Did y'all know that? Hey, how can you know about the new under it? I'll teach that maybe one day we get a little deeper yeah. because I think that went over some people's head. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people forget the word nothing means nothing <laughs> new. If people think it's oh maybe it's just technology, oh maybe it's just no, it's nothing new. Yeah. Nothing. Everything's repeated. Uh -huh. Everything. Yes. Yeah. So it's related to the sun. So we use the sun because the sun, it rises. Didn't I just show you all talk about life, life force, and how it rises and the word kum arise? <laughs> we just use the sun as a symbol to symbolically represent what we're saying because we are uh, visual people as, as melanated people. Mm -hmm. We use image. Mm -hmm. That's why you see we're always with our hands and moving our head and stuff, you know. We're so animated. <laughs> That's us. <Yeah. laughs> so that song was just used to represent <laughs> us going in our life cycle. That's all. That's why on the obituary you will see sunrise for the date of birth for somebody and sunset for the death date. Right? Mm. Right. That's all, you all. We ain't worshiping no sun. We don't worship what he created. No, we don't yeah. do that. This symbolism is also the source of the first letter in many la languages. The letter A. Check this out. Alpha. Hmm, like alpha male. <laughs> Aleph, like Aleph Beth. Allah, El, God. And also what was one considered the last letter, the T, the top. The first, the last, mm -hmm. the alpha, the omega, mm -hmm. the beginning and the end. These are the letters A and T, which relate to the bull. Now, this is coming back from ancient Kemet, you all. This is our stuff because our ancestors was there. Bantu ruled over there for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. They don't want us to know that, but we know it. It's the bull and taro symbolism, as does the ancient Egyptian word for ka. You know, here like ka, ba. The ankh is symbolism of the ta cross. The bull and the taurus and the root, the mouth, the gate, the womb, the symbolism. Remember at the top, you all, you have yeah. that oval shape, which is the feminine energy. Mm -hmm. yeah. which is the womb. The womb is a gateway from the spirit realm into the physical realm. Life comes into the physical realm through us. Us. So it's symbolic of the womb. Mm -hmm. The ancient Greek considered Ta to be the, uh, the symbolism of life and resurrection. 
Mm-hmm. So they they remember the aunt was the tar cross. That's what they called it, the tar cross. And the um ain't the crooks and sada, which is the cross with the the handle. And it represents life and resurrection. Ta equal resurrection equals rebirth equal life equals the arm. Go ahead, Gerard. Oh, you still have your internet open? Yeah, you want me to go to uh, pull something up? You go to uh, open up the um, use on Blue Bible. Okay. Yeah, Blue Letter Bible. You want me to go back yeah. there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay. now that you not when you mentioned um the yeah, open up blue letter by go to Exodus chapter one verse seven. chapter seven. Chapter one verse seven. Chapter one. Okay, I'm gonna share it. So y'all can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Read, read that. And the children of Esolele were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty, and the land was filled with them. What, what, what land was we in at that time? <laughs> what I just said. What you just said. <laughs> We're in Kemet. I told uh-huh. you told over there. Uh-huh. Why they rise up against us? I'll tell you the same chapter. <laughs> mm-hmm. They use trickery. Let's act wisely against them. You see verse 10. It says right there. Let's deal with them wisely. So who dealt what, with us wisely? Then? What, did King, Leopold, what, what did King Leopold what King Leopold tell his missionaries when he came to Congo? Huh? Oh, same thing Kay Liverpool told the missionaries. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yes. Same thing, same concept. They know they got. <laughs> exactly. Uh, they try to say that it was our... <laughs> because, you know, really, all melanated people are related. One, you know, I'm just going to say that I'm not going to get off into it. And so they try to tell us that it was our people that was coming after us us you know to kill us you know (laughs) granted yes there were some wars that was going on between us but not on the level that they have done and that they're trying to say so when they say come on let us deal wisely with them lest they multiply and they come to pass that when they're fallen out any war they join also unto our enemies and fight against us and so get them up out of the land so remember that i told just told you all that (laughs) And I had a timeline I told you all showing that their timeline is, uh, they're not telling the truth with their time either. When I was looking at this timeline that they got showing that they're Greek philosophers, some of them were back in the time with some of our patriarchs. So it makes you think that, oh, it's way back. No, it's not. When you look at their timeline and who was back during that time, you know, they were back there with our patriarchs during that time. So they were getting information. Some of these, uh, Hercletus was one of them. He's, he was a, a, a Greek philosopher. He was back during that time. So these people have been back in our land for eons, you all have to understand. Mm-mm-mm. Let me go back to here. I'm almost done. So commit very heavily influenced by Bantu. I don't think this is just the one I had. Let me go back. I got two of them up. Cool. Okay, here we go. Okay. All righty, you all. Any questions, comments before we move on? Okay. Well, you know, Mama Brenda, I, I want to say that uh, I haven't heard any, any of the teachers so far talk about, since, you, since you're since on the topic of the cross, I haven't heard any teacher talk about the Congo cross. We had a cross it's in the region of Katanga. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. It's called the Congo Cross. Mm -hmm. I suspect that's where they got our cross from. The cross that they are showing you is where they got it from. Yes, yes. I should have put that in there about the Congo Cross. It's, it's very deep, but it's in there with that circle of life and that it, sometimes it's as an X as well. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's the very, very, very old. It's, it's in a region where, where there was a lot of uh, copper mining. And um, so the Europeans have totally take, taken that uh, cross and they've put it in their museum, just like they have done to mm -hmm. all, all of our works. Yeah, that's called the Cairo, if I'm not mistaken, that X. Um, yeah, it look, it, yeah, it looks, yeah, well, yes. It looks like an a X. Well, it, in many ways, yes, it looks like an X, but it's, it's the position is like looking at from a, like a 3D, you, you got to look at it from a different angle. Yes, and it is yeah. a cross. And it's in, yes, I, I've seen it. I have books on it where I've, I've read up and uh, about the Congo cross. I'm familiar with it mm. and know about it. Uh, but you, well, you know you can't Google nothing like that. Ancestors is in the Impemba <laughs> and yes, all of that. Yeah. So yeah, you're about, you can't Google nothing like that though. No, they no, mm. no, 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 no. That's not out there. You all, mm -mm. that's not out there. They don't want you to know that type of information. No, they do so not. I want you all to know this also. Just to throw this out here, they refer to our uh, spirituality when the. Um, when they came into Congo, the Portuguese, they came up with the word fetish. You'll see, the, oh, that's fetish, fetish, fetish. That word was invented in around 14, 1500s when they came down into our land and referred to our spirituality as fetish. So you have to ask yourself, well, who told you it was fetish? Hmm. The very ones that conquered your ancestors. Why are you listening to them? And they conquered your ancestors and sent them off into captivity. Do you think that they have your best interests at heart that they're going to tell you the truth or who you are about your spirituality and the ways of your ancestors? We, our ancestors knew about God way before they even came, way before they even existed. Right. So how are they going to try to tell us about the creator when we knew about him before they even came on the, on, on the scene? Y'all learn from us, our ancestors. They learn from everything. You, you know, one, one of the missionaries came out there and he said he, he would give 10 years of his life to, to live like us for 10 days, to live like the people in Congo. Mm. He would have gave 10 years of his life to give 10 days to live how the people in Congo lived. Because of what they said. When you read some of the things these people said about how our ancestors lived, they said nobody yeah. was poor. There were no jails. I mean, we lived in peace and harmony. <laughs> yeah. And they just came and disrupted it and created hell on earth for us to this very day. Yes. To this very day. But we, but we the people allowed it. We allowed it. <laughs> Because of the fall. Because of the what? Our fall. The, the division of the kings. The yeah. division. Right. Thank mm -hmm. you. Disunity. Mm -hmm. I yeah. do all keep hearing Queen Ngon talking about unity. Yeah. Why do you think they go through extreme measures to keep us disconnected and disunified yeah. from one another? Because they know if we come together as yeah. one, as Yes. with the ubuntu spirit yes. oh my goodness the yes. power talking yes. about power mm -hmm. that's the same thing that the fbi director back in the 60s stated yep. he yep. said it was the most threat to the americas and it said black people unification they, they said they said the biggest threat was negro unity what he said right. yep that's what the biggest threat to america was negro unity Y'all see that? So y'all see, that's what calls them to conquer us. And see, and that's where our tr power lies. Thank but it's you. like, yep. from our reason, we just can't connect it. Yep. Ah. Yep. It's a spell. We're still under a spell. Yeah, it's a spell. Yes. And we feel, that's why we feel the need to compete. Yep. You know, as they said, that crowd mentality is amongst us. 
Instead yep. of uh, us lifting that brother or sister up that's going up, we pull them down. Instead of yep. pulling them up so they can turn around and pull us up. We pull them down. We can never get up with that type of mentality. So that's why we have to be healed from the ways that have been yep. brought to us that are not our ways. That are not the ways of our ancestors. That's why the, yep. in, in the scripture it says, stand ye in the highway. Ask your father. So who they tell you to ask? Who did I say father was? Hmm. Ancestors. Your ancestors. 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 And ask your forefathers, your ancestors. Yes. About the way, the ways that they walked in. The sure. righteous ways. Not this lying stuff that they given us. There's a yo, there's a church on every corner in the black neighborhood. We live out here. <laughs> All, some of you all have been out here with yes, it is. predominantly white. You don't see churches out here in the white neighborhood like you do in the black neighborhood. But yet we are still on the bottom of everything. The sickest of the sickest and the poorest of the poorest. Yep. Yeah. Mama, Mama Brenda. Yes. It is actually uh, is actually disobedience to try to go directly to the Father. We have to go through our ancestors to to get to the father is disobedience. This is what Adan Zambi always had, the leader, that the people would go to the leader to go to him. So it's the same way with the family. We have to go through our ancestors to the father. Now, what you're saying is true, because let's, 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 for these naysayers out here that may watch this, that are still in Christianity or some people still on that level, not to disrespect our people, because I still love them. And I know that we still have some people that are still in darkness, but I want to dispel that darkness and show them something. So what he's saying is true, but what they did with the New Testament that they added on is they made that ancestor one being, and that was Christ, who they said is our mediator and that we go through him. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what they did, you all, to trick right. us. And that, mm -hmm. that they gave us this, this white image, blue oh. eye, to our people oh. says, this is your God. This is how, who you have to go through to right. get to God. And they caused us to stop going through our, our actual ancestors and went to an ancestor of theirs or somebody of theirs that they made up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that was a curse. That was a trick. That yeah. is why we constantly in the, in the situation we're in. I don't care what nobody say. The spell. So what he's saying is correct. Remember in the passage where uh, it says that it was Jacob, I do believe. The, the Malik messenger, it says angel in the Bible came to him and said that his petitions that he was sending up, he had to fight demonic forces right. to get it sent up to the most high. Right. Yeah. That was right. an ancestor, y'all. Yep. Yeah. When he said we had to Fight because they get our petitions and send it up like like he said to the most high and yep. they gave us Jesus and said mm. it's him and mm. they took away our ancestors and gave us this mm. image of someone that does not even represent who we are as a people or the people right. of the book yep. mm. that's a mouthful yes. there Mm. So this is, this is when did a white man put his life on the line for a black man? For anybody. Right. For right. anybody. Mm. Right. And then, they, and then they lied to us and said, now right. you have direct access to the father with JC. Yes. <laughs> man, that's... <laughs> no, you lost your access. We lost our access. Yeah. Right. But, but he knew, he knew that we would get lost and... Calm down. Oh, my, my, He's my, restoring my. it, yes. Oh, and, okay. Nothing um, new under the sun. Yeah. Nothing new under the sun. <laughs> the greatest hoax in the history of mankind. Right. Jesus Christ. Yep. Huh. <laughs> mm. I remember telling my friend, I said, I got you all in Christianity committing idolatry. Yep. Mm -hmm. I said, because you're worshiping who y'all call Jesus' name is Josiah. They're two different people. Now he, two different people. You, I know you all know that. I said, so they have you all worshiping him. You're not supposed to be worshiping him. He's our brother. I, yeah, yeah. Yes. You don't worship him. Hmm. I said, he is not the same as the creator. No. no. He himself said that there's none greater than the most high. Mm. Yep. Yeah. So I'm going to show you these lies. We're going to get into it. Mm -hmm. He said the various forms of the kooks and sada have the meaning. Can y'all see the screen, what I'm reading? 
Yes. Yeah, we should. Okay. Have the meaning of life and fruitfulness. Why fruitfulness? Because you're producing, you're creating. So sex is energy, right? Sex calls you to create. You have fire, you have water, and you have earth. How so, Mama Brenda? Do I need to explain that to you all or y'all got it? We got it. Yeah. Yeah. So you're creating, you have all the elements of life there. And so you create, you don't only just create a baby, that's life, but there's other things that you can create. It's called alchemy. Why in the world do you think that these people in Hollywood always have these sex acts that they have to go through. They go mm -hmm. through rituals right. because mm -hmm. it's producing, it's creating. Mm -hmm. Another teaching for a different time. Oh, yeah. It's the Already. highest. There's no, it's the highest form of transferring of spirits. It's through well, sex. Yes. Yes. This is why they do those rituals. It's why they do these rituals. Alistair Crawley said the sex, sex magic was the highest form. And that's all oh. he did. When that's you research him, did. that's all he did. Sex magic. <laughs> and they do it in the Catholic Church. It's this Catholic Church went to, a, uh, I was reading an article. This guy actually wrote a book about it. He didn't believe the priest. The priest told him that they have a group of priests that does a uh, homosexual act. Because homosexual act is demonic. It is a yes. ritual. It is a sex yes. And what it does, it gives that individual that is, is doing it to, that, that's doing it, it gives them your power. It's still in your power, your essence, your star. It's still yep. in And so that is why they do this, to get power, y'all. Yep. I told you they take stuff and they corrupted it. Yep. So sex is, is, it was not meant for what they're doing it for. But that's witchcraft, because witchcraft is manipulation, and you using it for evil. That's what witchcraft is, because yeah. anybody can manipulate energy. But how are you using that energy for good or for evil? Mm -hmm. You see, and they're using it for evil. That's witchcraft. But they got y'all saying that y'all that is us. Granted, some of our people yes have taken it and corrupted it on the continent. But it's them, they're the biggest witchcraft, warlocks, and witches there ever was on the face of the earth, you all. Yeah. They found that island in the Caribbean where they was taking little kids. Why do you think they had they they focusing on kids? Hmm. They're pure. So that's really power for them. When you when you get something that's pure, it has a lot of power, y'all. A lot of essence. So we get they believe in they again. believe in immortality, maybe that. Yes. That's where they take an innocent child. Yes. They believe, they believe they're adding to their lifeline, to their yes. life. And they're, well, not only that, they, it's, it's, they get power, more power because it's innocence. Right. Yeah. And then they stoke the fear in them and then drink their blood. Yep. Yes. And so this here stuff that they do in Christianity with the uh, 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 um, communion. communion. Yep. That's, a, that's a demonic ritual. Yes, it is. That's demonic. Y'all do know that, don't you? You know the, the guy that was uh oh. cannibalism. That's cannibalism. Yes. He was in power for years over there, over there in Africa. Ah, uh, Mobutu and Mobutu. It's a documentary I seen where he was killing his people. The people was afraid of this man. He was. Oh, you mean? Them. I think you mean Idi Amin. Yeah. Uh uh. Idi no, Amin. not him. Uh uh. M Mobutu, it's a documentary I saw of him. Yeah, yeah Mobutu, Mobutu, Mobutu was doing that too, actually. Yes, I saw, I saw the documentary. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, he was in heavily involved in the killing of Patrice Lumumba. Yeah. Yeah, yes. he did, yeah, yeah. He was right. he was his friend. Was Amanda. Yes. Yeah, he, no, no, he was actually he was actually he was a childhood friend. He was a childhood and, friend. And yes. Yes, and you see how we they use us to turn against one another. You see that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So the man he was killing people in the in the documentary. It's a real document. It was the French that did this documentary. Yeah. And uh, I shared in the uh, the chat group, and uh, he was mm -hmm. killing people and drinking their blood. He was doing rituals <laughs> to get his power. That's how he said them. I'm telling you all, these people are demonic. It's true. <laughs> Mm -hmm. now that's, now that's witchcraft right there, y'all. That's the yes. witchcraft. 
Yeah. And when that woman called on the, she said, I called on the angels of Africa. She was calling on our ancestors. Yes. But they use words to, to try to trick people so people won't know. Because when you look at the word angel, and you go to really its meaning, it has multiple meanings. Like in Kikongo, our words have multiple meanings. It means messenger, mm -hmm. it means right. a host of things. So she was calling on our ancestor. It could also be an ancestor. Mm -hmm. So she was calling on our ancestor. Call so she really me. thought that our ancestor was going to come and help her. Man. <laughs> <laughs> really, this disillusion? They were, like, they were like, who are you? Right. Hey, who? <laughs> <laughs> Man, <laughs> they are so disillusioned. Okay, right. and you and you and they call it on our ancestors, and 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 she's thinking that they're going to help her reelect Trump. Let's look at this in perspective, you all, for a moment. I was telling that zombie this. I said these people that's coming up to the continent. That's learning our spirituality because you know they know that we're going back to our pure spirituality, right. and they calling on our ancestors. They really think. Look at who our ancestors were. Our right. ancestors are the ones that your ancestors killed. killed. Yeah, right. Exactly. So you 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 that the this. And oh, you come really on, come on now. You right. really want to call on them? Yeah. <laughs> you really think you want to call them? Yeah. Let them keep calling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you really, you really unless, want to call she, on those ancestors no. of our, our ours that your ancestors killed and mm -hmm. stuff like you want to call on them. Mm -hmm. okay. No, we saying Africa <laughs> is broad though. She could have been calling on her Esau ancestors from Africa. <laughs> yes. Esau's in Africa too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She, so. she no, she knew what she was trying to do. Yeah, I know she was trying to do. I'm just yeah, I was just joking. <laughs> But I got a scripture to go with what, what Silverback said earlier about the hierarchy uh -huh. about uh, Deuteronomy 32 7 says, y'all probably know this one. Remember the days of old, consider mm -hmm. the years of many generations, ask your fathers, uh -huh. and he will show you your elders, they will tell you. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's what I was referencing, that particular passage there. And it's another mm -hmm. one too. Let me see if I can find that one. Maybe you can uh Maybe you can find that one too, uh, real quick. It's another. Let me see. I'm gonna pull it up real quick, and then we're gonna get back on topic here. Here we go. So, so, so family. Mm -hmm. In the spiritual realm, our ancestors are, is the bridge to our to our, to the Father. And then in this realm, we are also a bridge unto our ancestors. Okay. Y'all get that? Yep. Okay. So don't let nobody tell you your ancestors are demonic. Your ancestors are you. You wow. are your ancestors. <laughs> That's your DNA. So to say that your ancestors are demonic, you're literally calling yourself demonic. demonic. You are your ancestors. You come yeah. from yeah. them. You see how they have tricked us? Mm -hmm. Jeez, oh, Pete, man, it was on a grand level. It was. Okay, I'm going to um, share this. I want to show you all this here. This is another one here, uh, Gerard. Jeremiah 6 and 16. It says, thus says the Most High, stand ye in the ways, and some say highways, and see, and ask for the old path. I asked somebody in Christianity, I said, what's the old path that they telling us to ask for? I said, this is the, what, the Old Testament, so it can't be talking about the New Testament because it's the New Testament. So what old ways they ask, telling us to ask for? It says, where is the good way? So <laughs> it's not Christianity because that's, that's the New Testament. That is, that's not the good way. It says, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your soul. So it's telling us how we'll find rest for our soul. It says, but you say we're not gonna do it. And you see how people say, no, nah, I don't, I don't believe that. I believe that means that they're walking not according to that path. So as we return back to the path of our ancestors, our righteous ancestors, we'll find rest for our souls, peace. The ancient yeah. path. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me go back here. Uh -oh. 
think I took off my I do have the whiteboard up. That's that's how she did that. I see that it is. I don't know how they got up though. Hmm. Okay, you all let me um this I lost the one I had, but this is the same one. So let me go back to it and find it. Okay, we did that. Okay, here we are. Okay, so the various form of the crooks and Sada have the meaning of life and fruitfulness and also of a union because the two is coming together. The, the feminine and the masculine energy is coming together to create, to fruitfulness, to create, create, not just choosing, but to create fruitfulness, which can be interpreted as the uh, heroes gamas of the God with his mother and for the purpose of conquering death and renewing life is a uh, pl uh, plane has been passed into Christianity. So this concept has been passed into Christianity. And uh, this is from a, a research uh, um, forum that I got this from. And it says that the definition of hieragamas is divine union. So the feminine and the masculine coming together, that's the union. Marriage, because when a man and a woman come together in that sense, in the eyes of the most high, that's marriage, not according to the ways of the ones that colonized us. That's, that's not marriage. It's when two is coming together. That's a union. That's what marriage is. So be, be cautious because people going around sleeping with all these different people, you're creating a union, a marriage with all these people. Mm -hmm. Your spirits are intertwining. You know, I had this conversation with my teenage son and after I got finished with him, because I, I went deep. I said, you better know who you laying down with and don't lay down with until you get with the person you're supposed to be because you, you, you're you uh, their spirit. You're getting their spirit and they're getting your spirit. You don't know what kind of spirit these people uh, have on them. And I said, in the most high eyes, he see you as married to that individual. So you sleep with Mary, you sleep with Lisa, you sleep with... Uh, whoever amber whoever in the eyes of the most high he's saying you married to these people when i got finished breaking this all down to my son he, he looked at me he said i ain't having sex so i get married <laughs> <laughs> mission accomplished <laughs> i broke it down i told him i said you better be careful dibbing and dabbing yeah. everywhere this thing is deep it's more than to just feeling good you all <laughs> it's Absolutely. deeper than that. Yes, it is. So it says it's a marriage between God and goddesses. That's you. He said that you are gods. Did he not? He said yes. That. Yes. So there's a marriage between the God and the goddess. Energetic balance. The feminine and the masculine come, becoming one. That's the marriage. That's the divine union to create. That is where they got the. Um, immaculate conception from you all it ain't what they teach in, in christianity that's a bold-faced lie the immaculate conception is two people that are pure that have not slept with everybody they are pure and they're coming together as one to pro procreate that's the and then they conceive that's the immaculate conception and then they have a child the mother the father and the son that the church has stolen and said that's the trinity where they took out the mother and they put it with the holy spirit you see how they corrupted it mm -hmm. that's what they did you all mm. sound like a gay religion to me <laughs> <laughs> they gave it a what i said it sound like a gay religion to me Correct. Very much so. You just have the masculine energy. That's why you mm -hmm. have the, the homosexual spirit that is so rampant. Rampant. I don't think it's rampant in church. Catholicism, it is so rampant in the in, in the black community in their church. So yes, it rampant. Is. Yes, yes. It is. Yep. Mm, yes, because it is. of who they have elevated. Mm. Because when you look at this Jesus Christ, this guy, this white, you know, Caucasian, blue-eyed, blonde. Gay hey, looking. When you look at who he came right. from, that guy was gay, y'all. Uh -huh. So you call him on a gay Caesar. You who you mm -hmm. call him on. That's why I'm, I say I can't sell foot in a church again, knowing what I know. And me me either. either. That's what I say. Me, I said I can't do it. My spirit won't let me. Uh uh. You My go up and that. You go. Have, you gonna come out with all types of spirits on yes. you. Yes. Know? <laughs> right. True. And people still walking around with the cross around their neck. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Still yes. bound. Mm -hmm. 
All right, it says the over at the top is the divine feminine. We talked about that in the shape like the uterus. The shaft below it is the divine masculine in reference to the phallus. So that phallus that they said, it says demonic. No, that is just sim symbolism that our ancestors used. Uh, uh, and it, 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 it can be used to create when the two coming together, the masculine and the feminine energy coming together. They symbolize fertility and the creation of life that occurs when they come together, as I stated. This holy union produces the child, hence the father, mother, child, uh, son, which Christianity usurp, as I stated, as the holy trinity. Okay? The ancient Egyptian hieroglyphic symbol of life, which is the Ankh, also referred to as the Tarquals, surmounted by a loop and known as crooks and sata was adopted and extensively used by the Coptic Christian because the Coptic Christians was our folks people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they knew about the arm. That's why it was a crooks and sata. You have to realize that our people were colonized by the Grecians and then the Romans. So mm -hmm. you got these Greek terminologies here, the crooks and sata, Latin and all this stuff. That's where it came from. Just like we've been colonized and brought over here, we speak an English language. You got the Francophone people that were colonized by France, right? Mm -hmm. And so on and so on. You can tell who colonized our people by the language that they speak. They speak, right. Mm -hmm. So we were colonized by these people from, from uh, the Britain. They speak Europe. Uh, uh, English and we speak this English language because they brought us over here and colonized us. You know, I, somebody said we got the worst of it because they took us out of the land and brought us in the belly of the beast. <laughs> yeah. <they did. laughs> we right here in the belly of the beast. So we really know that we lived among them. Mm. Yeah. We couldn't go okay. and live in the land. Most I would not and, allow them to go over there. And monolithic. Mm. We, we don't speak monolinguistic we don't speak anything else very few people speak anything other than english exactly and that was yeah crazy. but but mama brenda we we civilized the greeks first yes, but when, yes. We, when we ruled them we didn't rule them like the way they ruled us no we we we, we built their civilization civilization literally yes. we built the civilization the Grecians were first, they were a melanated people. Yes, yes. You know, so we, 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 we taught them everything. And then they, they, they turn around and they turn around back to us and insult us. You know, mm -hmm. it's like you turn around and you're insulting your father. Exactly. Because we're the first people. So if we're the first people on the universe, then we're your parents, right? <laughs> see how they they that double standard and it says honor thy mother and father well you ain't honoring us we're, we're the mothers and we're the fathers of of, of uh creation Earth. of the universe here we mm -hmm. are the melanated people mm -hmm. so why we want to listen to you all the children so you got this you see how i told you all when they took away the feminine and they just have the masculine how it's chaos so they got everybody listening to the children now what kind of madness is that? No wonder we, the world is in the state that it's in. You're listening to the children. I didn't even been here long. We've been here on this earth for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. This old. Mm -hmm. mm. Thousands of years. You gonna try to tell us, as we say back home down south, what and what? <laughs> <laughs> Please. So after Constantine converted to Christianity, he abolished crucifixion. We're going to talk about this crucifixion as a death penalty and promote it. Now, this is after supposedly he converted, but that man didn't die a Christian or whatever you want to call it. He still was pagan, had worship in his, all his multiple gods and stuff. As a symbol of the Christian faith, both the cross and the Cairo monogram of the name of Christ. The, uh, the symbols became immensely popular in Christian art and funerary monuments from circa 350. So we're going to look at this time frame here. So you see, after he converted to Christianity, now, Josiah had been long killed by this time, you all. We're going to look at that. He abolished crucifixion as a death penalty and promoted symbols of the Christian faith. So the use of Christian of the Christian cross as a Christian symbol uh, began after the time of Constantine, which occurred three centuries after the coming of Christ. So the cross did not come around until three centuries after so-called, quote unquote, Jesus was crucified. Mm -hmm. 
So mm -hmm. how can it be a symbol of him when it came about three centuries <laughs> after the fact, you all? Mm -hmm. Three mm -hmm. centuries is when they started using the cross to represent him dying on the cross. Three centuries. <laughs> Man, you better know what you win. They got our people so confused and in the mix. Mm -hmm. I'm so thankful that my eyes are open. The crucifixion and death of Jesus on the cross conferred a new significance to the use of the cross. So the cross was no more representing life, it's saying here. You know, the, the, uh, the ancient aunt, what they call the, the cruz ansada and the ta, ta cross. The ta cross was still the same as the, uh, the, uh, the aunt, you all. So now Constantine comes on the scene and he changes it. And he gives a new significance to the use of it in Christianity. A vast body of evidence shows that the cross was used centuries before the birth of Christianity, in which it was, but it wasn't the cross that mm -hmm. they have in church today. It was the, the Ankh. The cross is thought to have originated from the ancient Babylonians before it spread to other parts of the world. Syria, mm -hmm. Egypt, Greek, da 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 Evidence of the use of the cross centuries before the coming of Christ can be seen in the British Museum. So I'm just showing you all this evidence out there showing you how the cross was used way before Christ even came on the scene, they say. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yes. they have it in the British Museum. So they know all this stuff, but yet they still allow it to be preached a lot. <laughs> Ooh, what are we dealing with? Mm -mm -mm. You notice mm -hmm. I didn't say who, I said what? Yeah. <laughs> Reptiles. <laughs> Bible scholar finds evidence that early Christians adopted a Greek symbol to portray the crucifixion. <laughs> In yes. Greek, the language of the early church, the capital Ta or T looks pretty much like our T, the Ta. The capital Rho or R is written like our P. If you superimpose the two letters, it looks like what I have there. This is an early depiction of their cross, they say. The earliest Christian uses of this taro combination make up what is known as the styrogram. And Greek, the verb to crucify is styro. So what they used was not the ark. What they used was the styrogram, what they used to crucify or to kill people. There it is, styrogram in the Greek. It means to crucify. When you crucify, what happens to a person? Kill. They die. Mm -hmm. So in other words, it represents death. What does the ankh represent? Life. Okay, so they're not both the same. What the Christians are, are, are what their symbolism is, it's not the same. So a cross is a star rose. And that's what you see there. The ta and the rose. The top of there represent somebody's head hanging. And they got old depictions of this with the uh, head hanging down and saying that that was Christ and his head hanging. We're going to look at that. And um, a pictograph representation of a crucified figure hanging on the cross. So this is what this represents. Somebody's hanging on, hanging on the cross. So it doesn't represent life. It's used in the Greek words for crucified and cross. So the cross, what they call the cross, is representative of crucifixion, which is death. I came that you might have life, life more abundantly. Da -da 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 -da. That's all I'm going to say on that. The symbol of Christ on the cross called the starogram is derived from two Greek words, staros meaning an upright pale of stake. So it was a stake used by the Romans to crucify people. So the Romans, remember I told you the Grecians and then the Romans came and colonized our people. So the Romans used an upright stake called starogram also known as the cross, to kill people. The Greek word is staro, meaning to drive in stakes. The Greek word gram comes from grammar, which means the letters are written. The Greek meaning is a written cross. And you'll see here because they had things written across it. The starogram is a monogram, a motif, 
made by overlapping or combining two or more letters or group graphemes to form one symbol. The starogram is composed of two Greek letters super superimposed over each other, the ta and the ro. I just showed you that. So it's this guy that wrote this book, The Earliest Christian Artifacts, Manuscripts, and Christian Origins. Portado, he is his name. He said that the starogram is the earliest Christian image of Jesus on the cross. But like other Christograms, it was originally a pre-Christian symbol. So before the cross, there was a pre-Christian symbol that they used. And I already told you all what that was, that they yeah. said that the Coptic uh, Christians used, which were our people. It can be found on the Herodian coin from a time before the crucifixion. So before he was even crucified. So the symbol of Christ on the cross, and this is just going back into what I said here, but the second one, it says, even the cross itself is not represented in Christian art. Like I said before, until after Constantine became emperor of Rome. So you all need to be paying attention to these things. Well, not you all, because you all know, but our, our family that are still in Christianity, they really need to do some deep research. That's why it says, study to show thyself or approve or work and need not be, be ashamed. Rightly, that's 2 Timothy 3.15, rightly dividing the word of truth. These people in Christianity, we when we was in it, we didn't do it either. Not to the extent that we mm -mm. you know, because we was in it for all these years, but we were aware yes. of the truth. So they're not studying. They're not researching. Now, I did study. And I questioned. I told you I was a rebel in church. I told you, I gave y'all examples. So I'm not, I'm not surprised that I am where I am today. I'm not surprised in one bit because of the things that I questioned in, in, in church that didn't seem right to me, just didn't line up. Mm -hmm. So he's saying here, the cross itself represented in Christian art didn't, uh, was not represented in Christian art until after Constantine became the emperor of Rome. That's when the cross came to represent Christ. It was in cross wasn't even in the scripture, like you're saying. Huh? It wasn't even in scripture, like you're saying. No. And crooks didn't show up to the Latin. <laughs> yes. So you see, look at the time frame here, you all. They said so around 306 to 337 AD. When did Christ supposedly was crucified? First century AD. This is fourth century right here. So from in the fourth century, that's when the cross came to represent Christ dying on the cross. And he supposedly, his death is in first century. 30, I think 30 to 33 AD, which is first century. And this is fourth century. So almost 400 years later, the cross shows up. The cross shows up and says, hey, <laughs> this is what he died on. This is what we're going to use. Hey. Yeah, I am. Yeah. You know, Mama Brenda, the Romans had, uh, they, they were, they, when it came to uh, capital punishment, they did crazy stuff. I know. They did crazy stuff. And, you know, I mean, if put it this way, and another thing you have to think about is, if 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 it's so if it's such a big uh, sim, sim, symbolism when it comes to him, he's not the only one who died on the cross. If that's the case, right? If they're making it so, you know, if they're making it a big thing, he's not the only one. No, he's not. They use oh. it as a form of punishment. They they fed people to pit. I read some of the cool things yeah. that they did to people, and so y'all have to understand we're still under the grips of these people that did these cool yes. things because when yes. you look at Rome. They had a senate. I was looking at a video. They said he went on the hill, Capitoline. Where do they rule it here in, in America? It's called what? Capitol Hill. Capitol Hill. Capitol Hill. <laughs> this is still mm -hmm. wrong, y'all. We're right. still up under their grips. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look, look at that ego. Exactly. Yes. Right. The Romans. They still ruling you all. Same, mm -hmm. they the same people. They had a mm -hmm. he had a senate. He went on the hill. They said to go talk to the senate. What they do? They have a senate on the hill. Mm -hmm. Same thing. The design of Capitoline Hill is the same design as the White House wall. And I noticed something with us traveling that in every city where they have their uh, state building is made up the same way. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's very ritualistic. Very yes. ritualistic. Yeah, Freemasonic everywhere. Mm -hmm. And you know, yeah. what? I'm a researcher. I guarantee you, they probably face in the east. Mm. I bet you. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then I'm thinking now how they had us in Christianity, looking up to this symbol that represents death and doing mm -hmm. a ritual to eat and flesh and drink and blood. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they had us doing some kind of subtle witchcraft, y'all. Mm -hmm. Yes, they did. Mm. 
because he told us not to eat flesh, even though if it's, it, it is symbolic, it doesn't mean anything. It's still, you're doing it symbolically. So it's still the same thing, basically. Mm-hmm. So they, 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 they had us doing witchcraft in the church. <laughs> under, under the spell of Christianity. You yeah. see? You see yeah. y'all? Well, church, church means Cersei anyway. Yes. The circus. <laughs> right. Yes. That's where that word circus come from. Yes, it does. And, uh, <laughs> they replace assembly uh, right. with right. the word Cersei. And, and it is a circus on Sunday. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> our, our people need to wake up. They, 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 need to ret- they really need to wake up. We, we really have to send a petition that their eyes be open to this truth. Yes. You know... Because you know, Gerard read that scripture. I read that scripture by asking your forefathers and returning to the old path. Yeah. Why aren't you returning to the old path, the ancient path? Re- rebelliousness. Yep. The key. And I, and I can only imagine, Mama Brenda, how our, our, our righteous and cooler were feeling looking at us mm-hmm. in Christianity, doing all that stuff. The same way we feel when our children are disobedient and do things that we tell them not to do. You're so disheartened. Mm, mm, disheartened. It's true. It's true. Sometimes they do things and you just you're angry at them. <laughs> you know? You can't, you can't make the decision for them. Mm-hmm. No, we have free will. Zombie yep. gives us free will. Free will. And that's the same thing how I like to say our righteous and cool looking at us the same way. Yes. So it says it was after 313 A.D. Edict of Milan. Y'all heard of the Edict of Milan? Mm -hmm. So, you know, when Christianity came, they had all these edicts and they had these seven, um, um, what they call them, seven uh, meetings that they had. I can't think of it right now. I got it in here, though. Oh, was it the Pope treaties? You talking about the, the treaties? No, not the treaties. It's the um, the, Ecu- the all those people that came together with Constantine. It's in here. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. I'm having a in the Council of Nicaea. Yes, but they, they, yeah, the seven councils, the seven councils of the church. It was seven of them. Notice it was seven of them. You all like they trying to say, oh, it's complete now. Hey, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> And look at this number 313, Edit mm. of Milan. What does it equals up? Seven. It's complete. It's over. Listen to what it is. The Christians started to worship openly and to display the cross. Over the centuries, they gradually abandoned their uh, covert symbols, such as the Torah and the uh, Cairo, the Ictus, the fish symbol, and they, they went to the cross. So those times, it's saying it's over, it's complete. They do things methodically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Trust me. So I want you all to see what's going on here. What first century, fourth century? You see, three hundred to four hundred BC. That's the fourth century. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, first century is first AD to one hundred AD. And the the estimated death of Christ, uh, many of them say, is between thirty and thirty three AD. And I want you to show you here where it says that he started. He it, he implemented the the cross during three hundred six to three thirty seven. So I wanted to show you that's fourth century. And he died in first century, but then they decide this is what, what we're going to say. He died on this, and this is our symbol. That had nothing to do with it, you all. Nothing. Mm-hmm. It's death. It's demonic. And people elevating this thing in front of their church on Easter. Mm-hmm. It represents death. So you calling on the spirit of death. Mm-hmm. 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 Now let's get to the Christian cross. We talked about the onk. It means life. It is uh, the feminine and the masculine energy, the feminine on top and the masculine on bottom. The two come together and they create, they procreate, they life, fruitfulness. Romans, like the Greeks, use torture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they still torturing us and our people, y'all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I told you these are the same people. Mm-hmm. The same people that are in position of power. That is where the uh, the um, Protestant Reformation came from. 
They said that uh, they disagreed with what the Romans were teaching. The Roman Catholicism was teaching. That's a lie, you all. What it was, <laughs> the Portuguese had the upper hand in taking our ancestors and profitizing off of the slave trade. Mm -hmm. And they wanted in. And, and the Catholic Church wouldn't let them say that we're all the same. So they branched off. And that's why you got all these different denominations from the Protestant Reformation, and you got all these different people around that time started coming in and uh, getting into the slave trade. So after the the, uh, the Portuguese, you had the the British that ruled for a long time. They made that's how they made their riches. Mm -hmm. It's off our ancestors. The yes. UK became rich. All these European countries came rich from our mm -hmm. land, our resources, and our people. Us. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. You are right, Mama Brenda. You are right when you said that uh, um, um, that uh, initially you I, I forgot what you what you what you said, but yes, everything, every war, everything that whenever whenever they fight, the illusion is that they are, they're fighting amongst each other for nothing. They are always fighting for resources, and they're always fighting over us. Mm -hmm. Always, mm -hmm. it's always over us. Yeah. Yes. Until the second century CE, torture was used only on slaves. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. Now, when did we say they said Christ was crucified? First century. So they were used during that time, it says, only for slaves up until the second century. Who was ruling in North Africa? It was the Romans. After the Grecian, it was the Romans. Who was there? Who did I tell you was in North Africa and they were slaying? Us. Oh. So who were the slaves? Us. Thank you. So Yesiah was a what? Slave. Bantu. It was Bantu. Yeah, Bantu. So sorry. They killed him because he was speaking up and out for his people against a, a Roman government. And what have they done ever since then? They the still doing thing. it. Same exact thing. Same exact thing. That's why they killed him, you all. Kimbangu, Toko, same thing. Yeah, same thing. All of them. Malcolm X, Martin Luther mm -hmm. King, when he woke up. Yeah. All of them, when they rise up and speak up on behalf, just like with Kanye, mm -hmm. yeah. he's rising up. Mm -hmm. But instead of coming out, literally killing him, they killing him another way economically. Economically, economically. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not getting the fact that he got issues and whatever he said some things, but still, this thing mm -hmm. is deeper than that, you all. Very yeah. deep. Very yes. deep. They're sending a clear message to us. Mm -hmm. trying to send a clear message to us yeah and using him as an example it's very deep so yeah. it's deep <laughs> it's, it's deep you all well well what what they doing what they did to him is is what they doing to us and gradual because mm -hmm. of this new world order this is what they want to do to us anyway this is what they're putting in, in line to do anyhow but what they did to him they just did it openly but it's the same exact thing that they're doing to us. They're trying to take away jobs from mm -hmm. us. They mm -hmm. try to um, destroy us as a people. Exactly what they're doing, and they're doing it, and they did him through economic, and they're doing us the same way. Look at the food, poisoning the food, poisoning the air. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Look at look at what they did to to Mama uh, Kempa Vita when she spoke. Right. Burned her alive. Yeah. yeah. Child. Yes, her life and her son, I think, too, right? Yeah, yep. yes. Did you hear the mama on the continent? Y'all seen that video? Did y'all yep. pay attention? She said, I am back. Yep, yeah, I heard that. Yeah, mm. I heard that. You yeah. saw it in the eyes, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where, 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 excuse me, where, what, where, who, what? Yeah, when it was, um, <laughs> it was about the one with down in the, the, the Christian in and Christianity, in Jesus and Congo. Yeah. Yeah, that was powerful. Well, the the the, the lady with the fire, she was burning the Bible. Oh, the yes. Bible. Wow. She said, "I am back." She was talking. Yes, about oh. he turned to her as Kimba Vita. Yes, yes, I he remember catching that. 
<laughs> mm. <laughs> well, <laughs> they coming back, y'all. Until the second, let me see, okay. After this period, torture also concerned concerned the lower, 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 can't talk, social strata. The slave's testimony was, I don't like saying slave, the enslaved testimony was considered true under Roman law until during torture. <laughs> Mama Brenda, there's power in the slaves, Mama Brenda. There's power in the slaves. They, we, they, we, had, we had power. Oh, yes. Well, even, 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 if they, even if they think they're demeaning us, we're still powerful. Yes, and they know that. See, the problem is we just don't know who we are. Of course, we're, we have awakened and are awakening mm -hmm. to our true selves and how powerful we, we are. I was just... The information that I was finding out about the cosmos is just confirmed what the spirit told me in meditation one one time as I started reading scientifically what how they break down melanin and what melanin is. I went, my goodness, we some powerful <laughs> people. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm telling you all. We, we are some we, powerful people. Intuitively. Intuitively. <laughs> Woo! Man. Know thyself. Hmm. Know yes. thyself. Ugubani. Know thyself. Yes, Ugubani, man. Mm -hmm. mm. You all are some powerful people. We are some powerful people. Get that. I mm. never forget when I, my awakening happened. When I was crying, I had been crying out for some weeks to the Most High, and He said. Mm. It's because of who you are. Mm. Mm. And I heard the spirit said, you are the people of the book. Mm. I heard this. The, no man told me who I was. Mm. Hallelujah. The spirit told me while I was in prayer right. crying out, why mm. are we hated all over the world? Because a lot of killing of our people was going on. I told you all, I shared this with you all before. Even mm. the aboriginals, the police were killing them. And I used to go to the bathroom. Nobody knew I would cry. What have we done? Why are we so hated all over the globe? Why, why is this happening to us? I just kept crying out. Just kept crying out. I would just cry. Mm. Literally. Mm. And I heard a voice. Mm. So can okay, nobody take this away from me because no man told me this. The mm -hmm. spirit told me. Mm. That's right. mm. So it says the slave's testimony was considered true under Roman law only during torture. <laughs> only during torture. And they still mm. do that today. Don't they take people and they torture them? Yes, they do. Mm. Yes, they do. The savages. Savages. Yeah. You remember back in the day they would take take our young men and uh, torture them so to where they would just agree to raping one of their women or whatever. And yeah. that, that didn't happen, but they would torture them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah Somebody told me a story about, and they said it was on YouTube. This lady was in the hospital, Caucasian. And she said, you see that little black boy? She was telling this to a nurse. She said, I don't see nobody. She said, yes, a little black boy over there. Tell him to leave me alone. She said, I don't see uh, anybody. And then she mm. said, she said, who is he? The nurse asked her, who is she? He. And she began to tell the story, said that when she was a little girl, this was an old lady, all old Caucasian lady. She said, mm. when she was a little girl, this black family made a dress for their kids, the daughters. And their dresses was better than hers. Mm -hmm. And she didn't like it. So she mm. went and told her daddy that their brother touched her. Mm. Yes. And they murdered him. Mm -hmm. So he was, she was in the hospital. Mm -hmm. So no doubt, like mm. the person that was telling me this, he was waiting on her till she come on that other side. She was going to get it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. But until then, he would torture her by appearing. Right. Yes. Very good. And you don't know how many years he's been torturing her. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I know. Good. What kind of hospital was she in mental? I don't know. I, I don't know. I didn't see the video. Somebody was telling me about that. Hmm. Yeah. They, whenever, whenever you hear what you call huntings in the Midwest or whatever, these are the places where these people are coming back for them. All, all the American Black Indians, mm -hmm. you know, all the native uh, brothers and sisters. Yes. It's a lot of blood out there, man. Yeah. Yes. 
This this got to be Babylon. There is so much blood here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. A lot of what they speech. what they did is gonna come back to them double. Hmm. So I speak come back to them double. <laughs> well, I did hear that. I heard triple. The rape victims, stuff like that. So yes. So Makise, you got your hand raised. Yes, Mama Brenda. Uh, thank you. Uh, such a such a wonderful lesson. I just wanted to uh, piggyback on what you were sharing about how you uh, was awakened. Um, you know, I had the same questions. I presented the same questions and the same petitions to uh, Tatan Zombie as to, you know, why we were hated. And I knew it was more just thinking about it, just thinking it had to be more than just the color of our skin. It had to be something deeper mm -hmm. than that. And I, I prayed and asked for Tantan Zombie. Of course, I didn't know him as Tantan Zombie then, but I, I prayed and asked that he revealed to me the secrets in his word, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. revealed to me the truth. And, you know, I, I, shortly after that, you know, a friend of mine, you know, approached me. Uh, her name is Karen. I don't want to give her full name on online, but her name is Karen. And, and uh, Tantan Zombie just led her to me and you know she you know shared with me some scripture and all and that's where that's where it started for me back in 2017 and no way would I ever turn back there's no mm -hmm. way I could ever turn back so I, I just wanted to you know uh, share that I had the same type of experience about that prayer about you know who we were and, and why all of this was happening to us, why we were hated so much. And now it's all out. It, it's yeah. all being revealed as to why. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yes, it is. That is why this awakening, this awakening was ordained, you all. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see within the next year, we're going to see more of our people awakening too. So, mm -hmm. um, so going back to the slide, it says crucifixion, an important method of capital punishment. So the crucifixion on the cross was a capital punishment. Mm -hmm. So why would the most high identify himself with something like this? Let's think about this for a moment. Mm -hmm. Why would he associate himself with something where a group of people <laughs> use a relic to kill people? Just that, that's like having an electric chair and saying, oh, this, you feel me? That's true. That, that was capital, pun capital punishment, isn't that? It's, it's electric chair. Yes. yes. That's yes. what it's used today. That's what the Romans used today. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that capital punishment back then was the, the cross, the yeah. stake. Mm -hmm. And so our people that are still in Christianity they use it as a relic, as a religious symbolism. That's the money. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Oh, it's man. idolatry. Yes, idolatry. Yeah. So it says it was used as capital punish punishment, particularly among the Persian, Seleucids, Carthaginians, and then the Romans. From about the 6th century BC to the 4th century CE, Constantine the Greek, I don't call Alexander great. I don't, they're not great. They're Greeks, but they're not great. Correct. Our ancestors, mm -hmm. that's a different story. They're great. <laughs> exactly. mm -hmm. The first Christian emperor abolished it in the Roman Empire in the early fourth century. So that's when he got rid of capital punishment with the, uh, the cross. He says in the Roman Empire in the early fourth century CE, out of veneration of Christ. Remember, I told you all that's when they started using it as a, a emblem for the death of Christ on the cross in the fourth century, and he died in first century C. Right here mm -hmm. again, <laughs> he abolished it in the Roman Empire in fourth century CE in veneration of Jesus Christ, JC, the most famous, the most famous victim. And the brother was saying <laughs> here of crucifixion. He said other people was crucified. So, but they, but, but they made him famous, a mm. martyr, lifted him up so that people could worship him and take people off track. They took our people off track. Mm. 
So at the end of the first century BC, the Romans adopted crucifixion as an official punishment for uh, non-Romans for certain limited transgressions. Initially, it was employed not as a method of execution, but only as punishment. Moreover, only slaves convicted of certain crimes, and I told you all this previously, were punished by crucifixion. So <clears throat> that was during the, 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 the time of Christ. They said that they did this. The first and second century, and it was abolished in the second century, it stated. And it was from the just the slaves, that is. During the early period, a wooden beam known as a perka or patabulum was placed on the slave's neck and bound to his arms. Usually the condemned man, after being whipped or scourged, dragged the cross beam of his cross to the place of punishment where the upright shaft was already fixed in the ground, stripped of his clothing, either then or at his uh, scourge. And I don't want to read this. This is another one. I brought up. Okay. Mm -hmm. During the fourth century, when the Christian cross was created, the Christian edict of Milan and the seventh century councils uh, uh, were organized to define Christianity's meaning of Christ. So that's what the, the first uh, council was. The, the edict of Milan was to uh, 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 allow them to be able to freely worship Christianity. And, and I read somewhere it says whatever God they wanted to worship. So he gave them a freedom reign and allowed Christianity to come out of the ground because it was illegal during that time because they was following the ways of the Romans. And just so you all can know, the Romans were the type of people that when they conquered a people, they took on the, those people ways and, and merged it in with theirs. Yeah, added to their gods. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So it says the Edict of Milan in 313 AD proclamation that permanently uh, uh, established religious toleration for Christianity with the Roman Empire. It was the outcome of a political agreement. So Christianity was the outcome of a political, and this is from Britannica.com, you all. Yeah, it was actually, it was Constantine who dreamed, he, he was the one who said he dreamt that uh, the religions, he, he wanted to unify the um, that there's going to be one, one religion to rule over a Rome. So yeah. he, he, he said that uh, um, he's gonna, he, say, he says, I forgot what his quote unquote prophecy from his quote unquote God, <laughs> that one religion is gonna come about. And he was the one who formed Christianity. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. He's the one that did everything to make it come about and to popularize, it came bit, but it really grew after this, you all. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, it was it has to, it had to do with politics. So Christianity, religion has to do with politics to rule, mm -hmm. to dominate, yes. to control. That's what it was used for. It still to this day is used to rule and to dominate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I have a P, I have a PDF. I'm gonna share. I'm gonna put it in the chat. Uh -huh. It talks about uh, somebody got information what was really going down behind the scenes at the Council of Nicaea mm -hmm. and how they how they come how they would how they did a raffle or a vote on which god name they were all going when they were coming on to one religion which god name they were going to use i think zeus was on the table krishna mm -hmm. yeah i just saw that yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and how they combined they said they combined zeus and krishna how they got jesus christ right uh-huh right uh-huh mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. and we're seeing now how the Catholic Church is trying to push this one religion again. Yeah. That's the goal. Yes. And you know why? Because they're losing power. So the same, like we just said, there's nothing new under the sun. So they did this no. to, to, to make them more stable. So they have to do this to make them more stable because they can have more control. Because if you have people thinking the same, acting the same, you have uniformity. And that's what they don't want with us, uniformity, because there's power. So they know that unifying everybody to think the same, act the same, believe the same, there's power. And they can control them because you're all thinking and acting the same. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> That's that's just exactly. it. you know exactly. that's why they're trying to do that. Nothing new under the sun. So we we just need to learn these people tricks. The, these the tricks just. Huh. It's, yeah, it's it's a deep hole, very deep. Yeah, it's very deep. Which they also created Islam. So they exactly, have, you know, yeah, all religions were created by. Created. Yeah, 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 they created all religions. Yeah. So it was a political agreement between the Roman Emperor Constantine and Licinius in 313. The proclamation made for the East by Licinius in June 313 granted all persons freedom to worship whatever deity they please. 
and assured Christians of the legal rights, including the right to organize churches and directed the prompt return to Christians uh, confiscated property. Now y'all do know that all these pagan temples that they had, when they allowed Christianity to come forth, they start, started building churches on these lavish churches that they have in Rome and different places uh, over there. Those were pagan temples, you all. And they built over it. <laughs> yeah, they make sure. Here's all the, uh, the ecumenical councils of Nicaea, Constantinople, Ephesus, Chalcedon. And uh, the one in Council, uh, uh, Nicaea was the first one. And actually, the, the, they was uh, bringing Arius, which was, he was Black. He was African. You know, and he was saying, what y'all saying about Josiah is not true. He's not God. He was saying, is research it. Mm -hmm. And so they said, we got to stop this because his teaching is going forth and it's causing disruption across the uh, empire. So we got to stop it. So they called this council. They called it before they had it in Nicaea. They had another place. I forgot what it was called. And the reason why Constantine, he called it, the reason why he called it and placed it in, Nice, in Nicaea from the other places, because he wanted more representation of his bishops in the West, this Western bishop. That's why you have the East and the West of Roman Catholicism, because of that split in what they believe, because there's a difference. This is how all this stuff came about. So he's, he had it in Nicaea, so he had more representation, but uh, um, uh, the, um, what's his name? Eric, what's his name? I just said you all. Oh, it escaped me. But um, that bishop, the black bishop, Arrhenius, or something like that is his name. But anyway, uh, Arrhenius, right? It's, yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. Um, he came and they basically uh, banished him because he stood his ground. And he had a lot of followers that was with him. They said, and so um, you see. The Council of Nicaea was 325 AD, the fourth century again. And they started saying, this is what Christ is. This is what Christ, this is what we're going to believe. So this was three centuries after the death of Christ, uh, Christ on, the, on the cross. They said that they came up and said, this is what we're going to believe. This is our belief right. about Christ. And his and name. Been long yeah. dead, y'all. Yeah. So this stuff was all fabricated. Right. And our people and our family and Christianity, they, they can't see this stuff. Even when you show them this, they can't receive it. What do they call that? Reprobated mind. It's something Let's else. Hennessy. Huh? Hennessy. Hennessy. Denial. Heresy. Heresy. Oh, heresy. Yeah, not Hennessy. <laughs> well, you know I'm drunk in the spirit, ain't it? Drunk on the front. Drunk on the front with all this. Oh, uh, hey, we all got a pass, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's another terminology that they use in psychology now when something you see the truth and you don't want to believe the truth because you've been believing this lie for so long that it's hard to dissonance. Is it that oh, a dissonance? Dissonance? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's what our people are dealing with. Cause you show, cause I've heard several of them say when I give them evidence, I go to the Bible and show it to them. Cause they still in Christianity. I just use the Bible and show it to them, give them scripture. And they, this is what I, I've heard several of them say, but I don't believe. Mm -hmm. So I, I said, that's that's pride, man. Yep. I yeah. showed you. You say you believe in the Bible. This is what you go by. And I show you that what you are practicing is a lie according to the Bible. And I show it to you now all of a sudden. I don't believe. Mm. And I've heard this several times when and, I show people. And, and some of it is that, you know, once when you see this and you understand and you learn it, you are held accountable. You're responsible. That's you right. Don't want to be held responsible yes, for their exactly. actions. And they want to continue in the lifestyle and whatever they into and whatever they doing, they want to continue in that. They, they, they don't want to cut that off. And that's why I say Christianity is a micro microwave spiritual practice. Yep. It teaches you no discipline. No discipline. Right? It, it creates a lukewarm lifestyle. Oh, he died for me, so I do whatever I want. 
Yep. And all right. that just come you back just you got the father, it. son, and that's it. Hmm. No, 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 no discipline, no, no higher, you know, order, just whatever. Whatever. And that's people, that's why people love it so much. Right. Like they can be comfortable in their flesh and still say, I love the most high. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's also that's called all it a reprobate, it's also called a reprobate mind. Reprobate right. mind. Right. That's right. You say a quick prayer, I accept Jesus in my heart, I'm good. That's it. I that's my it. that's my spirituality. That's it. Right. I can do anything I want. I can do everything after that. Repent because I'm under grace. <laughs> right. So after that's you accept him, so after you accept him into your heart, then you can go right back out and do whatever you want to do. Yeah, exactly. And then right. repent, but knowing that you're gonna go out and party or whatever, you know, who knows, whatever. Mm -hmm. They say, oh, well, I'll just do that and repent later. That's why they don't want the truth. They right, right. That's right. Yeah. Don't tell. I don't want to hear it. Don't tell me. Mm -hmm. You said they're going to be held responsible. Once she, once it's unlocked, now you have the camera. Right. Now your ancestors are looking at you. All right, here we go. Time. Come on. Get it together. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I give I give Kimbo Kimbo the Tata -ta Zombie because <laughs> I, I wouldn't allow... Uh, church didn't pull me in that way. Right. You know, I was not a man worshiper mm. and I knew things wasn't right. And Tom Tom Zombie knew my heart, you know, during right. that time that I was involved in church, but I didn't let it pull me in like some people do. Some yeah. people just, you know, are pulled all the way in mm -hmm. to that. And I'm, I'm grateful that that spirit didn't get a hold of me. To just right. get lost up in the up in the church, yeah. Yes, yeah. you know he still allowed me to have a some sense of awareness. Right. Yes, and you know I just knew something something wasn't right. I'm I'm just grateful. I just wanted to yeah. add that. Yeah, and, and you yeah, know I'm right with you with that. Same thing with me. <laughs> the, the thing that really bothers me about a lot of our people is when I when you try to tell them and you try to show them <laughs> even in the scriptures that they know. Well, my, but but my pastor said. But bit the bishop said, oh, okay, you worshiping pastor? You're supposed to know this for yourself. Exactly. Right. Quote unquote, passing a torch to his daughter. Quote, right. Y'all see what's happening? Yes. Oh, I didn't even know you were doing that. What's happening? What happened? He passed the torch to his daughter. He's stepping down, I guess, retiring or whatever, but he's right. passed the torch to Who? T.D. Snakes. Yeah, T.D. Oh. Snakes. That's exactly right. And then, oh. you know, Creflo Dollar came out back here saying that tithing was not right. Right. Wait, right. the truth on tithing now. After he got all this money, this lavish house, all these fancy cars, don't he have an airplane? Plane. Yeah. 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 He told, he, told any of the he told me to burn his books on time. Did he get that money back? That's what they said. Huh? People were saying, well, give us our money back. All uh -huh. these churches need to give our money back. All, all the money mm -hmm. I gave all, all of them. Them. They to I know. Yeah. It wouldn't be Absolutely. <laughs> but you know who got it? Yeah, the churches don't have it. The churches that got all that money. The Vatican the got folks. The Vatican. They got it. They got all that money. When you pay tithes the to the church, they give it, they're paying this pastor all these lavish sa uh, salaries and they sending their kids to these uh, prominent schools and they got all these, these uh, you see that man, and I think it was staged, that was, uh, that got robbed in church. And he oh had yeah, that was staged. Uh, and then he turned so around and assaulted this lady. Right. right. You see how they get exposed, y'all? Yeah, that was so fake. Oh my god. But he did. He, he had ripped off this 90-year-old lady and her grandsons and nephews came after him in the church. That's crazy, man. Mm -hmm. They need to wait. Then he have a Louis Vuitton suit on or something. Yeah. 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 yeah, driving a Bentley and all kinds of stuff. Put a Louis Vuitton suit on. Right. <laughs> and then it was one pastor he was fussing at the, the people because he said he'd been asking for it. this went viral I've been asking y'all since last no. year y'all saw that yeah with the watch uh -huh. yeah what? he got angry with the congregation because he a watch or something he wanted 
you know, this 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 church thing in Christianity, it's it's a big joke. I just shake my head. I say it's a big joke. Yeah, sad. It's a big joke. Oh it's it's pity, man. It's pity. I just pity people now. Yeah, it's pitiful. Yeah. All right. I just want to show you. I'm not going to go over because the seven council, just so y'all can kind of get an idea of this fake Christianity that our people in. At this council, the church established the following The Son of God is a true God. This is what they determined. Constantine and those bishops of the West. The, uh, the Son of God is the true God, the begotten of God the Father before all ages. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was not created and is eternal. So uh, this is this was three centuries after he died. As the Son of God begotten from God the Father, Jesus Christ is of the essence with the Father. The church should uh, celebrate Pascha on the first Sunday. So they changed everything. Look, look at this. This is what they determined. This is what we're going to do, and this is what we're going to believe you all after, what, almost 400 years after the man had died, been murdered, after the first full moon, after the spring vernal equinox, and they discussed various roles of bishop, priests, and deacons in their jurisdiction and their election, ordination, respectively. So they totally obliterated our system and brought this up at us because we had elders that we went to. Can, some, can anybody put their cell phone on mute because we're getting some feedback? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Elder. Many other canons regarding excommunication and penance, etc. So in antiquity, crucifixion was considered one of the most brutal and shameful modes of death. The cross, death. It says probably, probably originating with the Assyrians and Babylonians. It was used, which we know were melanated people. It was used systematically by the Persians in the 6th century BC. Alexander the Greek brought it from there to the Eastern Mediterranean countries in the 4th century BC. And the Phoenicians in introduced it to the Rome in the 3rd century BC. It was virtually never used in pre-Hellenic Greece. The Romans perfected crucifixion for 500 years. Hmm until it was abolished by Constantine in 4th century AD. Crucifixion in Roman time was applied mostly to slaves. That's what I told you all. Disgraced soldiers, Christians, foreigners, and very rarely was it the Roman citizens. So we're here at the end. So no, the Ankh is not demonic. No, it is not a, 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 a Masonic symbol or whatever we're saying. It, it, it is representative for life in our culture. Our people knew it to represent life. The Christian cross we saw, I showed you, it represents death. It was used in ancient Egypt, the Ankh, and as early as Babylonia and Mesopotamian area, some uh, writings say. The Christian cross was around the fourth century during the reign of the Roman Empire. Actually, around Constantine is when the Christian cross came about. And the Ankh is used symbolically to create. It shows how life, how things are created, how we use our energy to create. Whereas the cross is used to destroy. So it says in the very Bible, choose you this day, life or death. I choose life. He said, I've set before you life and death. Choose life. Choose life. That's what he said. I said it before you choose life. Mm. So they have lied to us on a grand scale about our culture, about our ancestors, our forefathers. They were some great people, did some great things. We come from greatness. And they don't want us to know this greatness because they know if we begin to realize who we are and the greatness that our ancestors, who they were, and we begin to embrace as the scripture we showed you, that path of our ancestors, our righteous ancestors, they know that we will begin to rise again back to the status of we was what we were once before. I told you all that we were here way before they came. So do you mean to tell me that the concept of a God didn't come about until they came on the scene when we were here thousands and thousands of years before anybody? No, we had the concept. Our ancestors knew that there was a creator. They changed it. And they worshiped. A one creator. To this day, over on the continent, they know that, that there's one creator. They know this. 
way before the, these people came. So they came into our land. <clears throat> they were taught by our ancestors and they turned on us. Yep. Ravenous wolves. Yep. And we've been in this state since. And like you all were saying, like what like we're saying, it was because of disunity amongst us. Yep. We can't even unify for the sake, even for, for Kanye, even though the man has said some things against us, we have to look at this in a spiritual perspective and understand that this thing is deeper than that. Right. This man is being used as an example. Right. They're using him as an example for us, uh, uh, saying that th you all, anybody else do this, this was going to happen to you. But if all of them stood up, like Kyrie came out, Irving came out, if more of them started coming out and they want to sanction him, guess what? Because they make money off of us, you all. So if all of them came out and they sanctioned him, they would not be making any money. Did y'all mm. hear how Adidas losing? They said millions of, I think $250 million just by dropping this guy. So imagine all the other people come out and say, no, he's telling the truth. We know he's telling the truth. And we're tired of you all paying us off to perpetuate your lies. And we're How no longer it? going to do that. And That's they the start truth. sanctioning all our people. Guess what? They would have no money. Thank you. Like that, that, that meme that was going around how we are the ones holding their table. And if we stand up, it's going to knock over their world. So people need to stand up. Our people need to stand up. And they need to stop selling themselves out. Just because you don't know who you are, you're selling yourself out. If, you, if, if, if I, as a parent, I had riches, I had power, but you didn't know I was your mother. Because something happened and you was taken away from me. And somebody was selling you what I had. It's rightfully yours, but you don't know it's rightfully yours. Somebody came in and would start stealing it, taking it, and was selling it to you, your life. Y'all see the insanity in that? That's what's happening. You selling your life for something that already belongs to you. You don't even, even have to sell yourself because it's yours by birthright. Ooh. Yes. Yes. Oh, Brenda, uh, uh, I, I listened to uh, 105.3 Black News the other day on the, on the radio, and uh, 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 I, I pronounced her name, Vicka uh, 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 Fox. Uh, the, uh, yeah, uh, she was uh, denouncing, she was uh, talking about uh, Kanye West saying that if you need help, uh, we're here to help you. Uh, you uh, you uh, have four beautiful daughters, and we need you to uh, 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 come and get help. You need help because he is saying who he is, you know. And they're saying Adidas gonna drop him. I heard he tried to go to uh, Skechers, and they they denounced him as well. You know, they were, he was trying to um, go to Skechers, I guess, to try to get. Uh, uh, deal with Skechers, but uh, they didn't uh, take him on as um, uh, as um, I don't know uh, why he was going yeah. there. I don't know why he's going there either. They're owned by the ish people too, so I don't know why he was going there. I don't know what. Yeah, they... that's what I heard. I don't know how true but, it is. But... The, the bottom line, he sold his soul to the devil for fame right. and fortune. Now that came enemy, out of his own mouth too. Now the enemy is coming back to collect. Yes, yes, we have to stand by him because he is a brother. Yes, we have to stand by him because he is bringing out truth. But the first part of it is that he sold his soul to the devil for fame and fortune. They all have, to tell you the truth. They all have, right. Mm -hmm. But due to the fact, I don't know many rappers that have gotten to the financial status, not many, that he has, uh, like, in the billions. Mm -hmm. So, of course, they're going to use him as an example to strip him of everything because it's the enemy saying I dare you when I came right. and I gave you. You fight right. Thank you. Come on. 
But here's the thing. You um, can't when... double cross the double crosser. I hope you don't detract. I hope you don't uh, uh, turn away from what he's saying. Like Nick Cannon, he made an apology to to the uh, to uh, people well, saying that you no. know he didn't mean to do that. By, 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 you that by you saying that, I did see. I don't know how true it is, but I did see that he did start to um, apologize. He apologized right. to the Jewish community, he said. right? To the Jewish yeah. community, so sure did. Well, Kenyon, you know, has that type of wealth. He don't. He don't need it anymore. If he if he invests if he invests correctly or got money in the bank, he can live off interest on that money for the rest of his life. Well, That's, right. That's, That's right. That's right. right. So exactly. Yes. He put that money back into the continent. The BS. He can create himself. He can go back to Africa, yeah. go to Africa, right. and start yeah. creating businesses for himself. And then, that not only that, it will be helping our people as well. That's what I'm saying. Our people just can't wake up. You exactly. don't need those people. Those people need you. They said that they're going to continue to make his shoes and to use his name. So they still using his his energy. They still yeah. have his energy. Take yeah. your energy back to the continent, y'all. Absolutely. Because yes. money is That's energy. Right. Take all your creativity and your energy to the continent. Open up you, your, your businesses there. Forget yeah. these people. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. We don't need them. And you know, if we would just uh, one day or two days not spend a nickel. That's what we need to do. That would tear them up. For real, for real. That's what so will happen. Especially, okay, what? especially when Black Friday comes, we don't spend right. right. not, not, not one right red cent. cent. But, but you know, not what? only that, we don't need to buy any Nike. No, nope. sure. we don't Nike. need to buy Adidas. Right. Absolutely, that, that uh, the Puma. No, like none of it. None of them. I were. That's like they sanctioning him. We're gonna put a sanction on y'all because yeah. we know that the, the the black community spend more money than any group of people. So yeah. we need you to do an economic mama. boycott, like they are sanctioning them. Let's boycott them. Stop buying their products. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. It's a big it's, it's holiday it's a coming. Walmart. No, that's you know, sanctioning them too. Yeah, a big holiday coming, and you know us is yeah. uh, us people. We we celebrate this big holiday coming, you know, uh -huh. and we stop selling, we stop spending money. We can stop spending money. They're gonna shut it, they're gonna shut it down. We'll shut it down. Absolutely. But, but, what big holiday? You talking about Christmas? Christmas? Yes, we have to come as a whole. Oh, just not a just oh. few people, but as oh. a whole. Right. All the holidays. Yes. All holidays. Every one of them. Don't buy nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Shut it down. Shut it down. We got yeah. the power. We don't Shut know it who down. We are. And, and you know, we do have the power. Look at the power of wealth from off of us alone. Look at that power. Mm -hmm. like, Trillions of dollars that they make from us. Right. Yeah. So, you know, there's a passage in the Bible, you all, that said that they will make merchandise off of you. You see how they have made merchandise off of us? Because majority of the people that is in the NBA and the NFL, they are predominantly Black people. So right. even if they would start protesting and say, well, no, we're not going to go out and play, guess what? Those people that own the NFL and the NBA, they're going to lose tons of money. They don't right. realize the power that they have by people. Exactly. And yes, just a lot of them are focusing money, 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 money. Just and they're not enough. Just imagine, just imagine the amount of money that they're paying these athletes. Imagine on, the amount of money that the owners are getting. That That's they're right. able to pay them those types of salaries. Exactly. Right. Exactly. It's modern day slavery. It's modern day slavery. That's all. Y'all see the, com the NFL Combine. They did a pitch comparison. They had these guys pretty much naked. Measuring them, same thing. Right, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Exact yep. same thing. It's the exact same thing. <laughs> yes, yes. So, and, and you know, they were last year. Uh, they were really on Kyrie for refusing to take the the you know the vaccine. The vaccine. Not, 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 not. Oh, I God. mean the 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 I forgot we were recording. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're gonna we're gonna stop recording so that we can talk freely. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. So those that want to come on and see the most of the juicy stuff is after the facts. You all, we, yeah. so we thank you all for being with us. And we hope I hope that this have um.
enlighten some people. And I hope yeah. this was informative for some people to help some people to see yeah. the lies that we have been fed about this here religion. That, that it's just not real. It, it, it's, it's not what they have presented to us. And we need to quickly get up out of there, the ones that are still in there. So uh, thank you all. And we'll see you all next week. So let me find his here to see.